Episode 38 coming at you guys live from my podcast studio in Toronto, Canada. I'm joined here by my lovely, beautiful fiance, co host, Teresa Opedesano. I'm your host, Denver. These are the intros you guys love. Let's get into it. What's the theme for today, Teresa? The theme is what's it called? What's it called? <laughs> oh, we were doing so good. We were on, I was on fire. <laughs> now we're like, shh. It's when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours, guys. Pretty self explanatory, I think. Well, my interpretation <laughs> was, you think a story is bad, and then it gets worse. Yeah. So I feel like these are going to be some like really good stories with some really juicy updates. So buckle up, hang on, get your hands and feet inside the vehicle, and we're ready to rock. Sounds good. Who wants to go first? I will go first. I've got, I've got a big one. I've got, we're going to start off really strong. Okay? Okay. Okay. Landlord attached GPS tracker to my car without my consent or knowledge. Oh, damn. Ooh, this could have been a good one for our, our older episode of Roommates. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Landlord kind Landlord. of roommates, maybe mm-hmm. not. Mm, I don't know, but let's go. <laughs> I will have to give uh, a trigger warning for stalking, identity theft, and assault. Ooh. Hello, a little background. My partner and I were getting the spare tire on my car unmounted from the bottom of the car when he discovered a circular magnetic device attached to the lip of the bumper of my car. We initially couldn't tell what it was, but after using Google Lens, we discovered that it was a land, air, sea tracking device. When we discovered this, we were obviously worried, but I was especially worried because I had been stalked and attacked by my ex in November of last year. Thinking it belonged to him, we filed a police report and had them find out who the owner of the tracker was. To our surprise, the tracker was purchased by our landlord of about three years. Apparently, he had been checking our location periodically and the device was live when we found it. It came as a huge shock to us because he seemed like a genuinely good person who has a family and who even helped us install floodlights and curtains on our home after I was attacked. The police have been trying to contact him to get some answers, but he has been not returning their calls. It has only been a day, though. Other than feeling unsafe in our home, we also feel like it's a huge invasion of our privacy and honestly a breach of trust. Again, our rapport with him seemed good and he seemed like a family man, so we just want to know what the future of our housing situation is going to be. I live in Oregon, so can there be a case made in criminal court? My main question is, would I be able to sue him? Sorry if this seems to be all over the place. I just found it today and I'm still processing what happened. Any advice would be much appreciated. Damn. Uh, I don't really have any advice to give, <laughs> give OP. Um, I, I think she did all the right steps by going to the police and finding out who the tracker was for. Um, I, I I don't know. I guess wait to see what's going to happen. Like, maybe move out if you can. Like, but sometimes it's not really, like, in your financial means to. Like, it's it's difficult to move out, like, when you don't plan to. I mean... Your landlord already knows where you live, regardless of the tracker. So, what's he trying to figure out? Yeah, what what is where his you buy goal? your groceries? Maybe he really maybe he wants to know where he gets their food. They, they get their food from. Oh yeah, or that, where they I'm work. Sure, that's it. Maybe he wants to. Pr- he needs proof that they actually have a job. <laughs> it's like landlord goes to the extreme, for- <laughs> making sure that they actually have a job. But that it does say that they he he's been their landlord for three years. So. The rent payments have been coming through. The checks have been cashed. That's really weird, though, because, yeah, you already know where this, like, where she lives. Or is Opia a male? I think female? so. Yeah, I think I think so. Um, so it's weird because usually, like, people f- try to find out where people live and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. creepy or, or whatever their goal is. Maybe he wants to know everything else about their life. It's interesting. Do we have an update? <laughs> I have a tracker on your car. <laughs> what do you mean? We share the same car. What are you talking about? It's our car. It's our car. <laughs> I can track you when you're driving our car. Did you know that? Well, you track me on my phone. Yeah, I also you got don't... that too. You don't have a tracker on the car. Oh, yeah, you do. No, we did. We put the we... GPS. Because we, oh, yes. we used to Turo at the car. So yeah, we used GPS to. GPS was uh, on there for Turo. Yeah, we rented it out to, to strangers. Yeah, so. not creepy, guys. Just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Update. So, original post was September 15th, 2023. Okay. The update, July 27th, 2024. Ooh. So, brand new update a year later. Holy shit. Okay. So, this update just came in. You guys are getting it hot off the press. Update. 
Wow, I can't believe it has been almost a year since I posted this. A lot has happened between now and then, and I could write a novel about these updates. But writing is not my strong suit, so I apologize if this update seems relatively brief. It's a long update, but a lot has happened. So, as some commenters guessed, it was my ex who attacked slash assaulted me in November of 2022 who attached the GPS tracker to my car. My ex, from what I remember, used Reddit a lot, so I had to wait to give these updates. Didn't I mention that my ex and I haven't talked in over eight years? Anyway, the way he was caught and his behavior following being caught is absolutely unhinged. I posted the original post the day after the cops showed me that the GPS tracker was registered under my landlord's name, but it soon became very clear that my ex had used my landlord's identity to try and cover his tracks. What? And he almost got away with it. He put my landlord's name and address on the information for when you register the land, air, and sea tracker. The cops showed up at my landlord's home and essentially interrogated slash questioned him about the situation. Obviously, my landlord had nothing to hide, so he answered their question, allowed them to search his wallet for any associated credit cards and his phone for any associated numbers. He obviously came up clean, and that's when the real investigation started. The tracker was linked to a track phone that my ex must have been using as a burner phone. It also required you to make monthly payments via credit card, but he would use a prepaid visa that had no name slash identity associated with it. He probably also paid cash for these prepaid cards. So all of this covering up and you know what it got him? A woman's voice. Thankfully, the police officer investigating the case took every avenue to catch him, which included setting up a mini sting operation, since the only lead was the track phone. The officer had a female colleague call the number to try and bait him. The call went a little something like this. Her. Hi, is this so-and-so? Him. Yes, who is this? Her. This is so-and-so from Blank Bar. We met the other night and you gave me your number. I just wanted to see if you wanted to hang out sometime. Him. Oh yeah, I remember you. We should definitely meet up. And so on. The police believed that the recording of the call itself was enough evidence for probable cause. But they wanted to get him meeting her in person to really solidify the PC. They were texting back and forth for a while, but I think he eventually realized that it's too good to be true and that the GPS monitor was no longer going anywhere other than the sheriff's office. He must have put two and two together and stopped. But not all hope was lost. The cop got voice verification from me and one other person that could verify that this was his voice. He was arrested for identity theft and illegally affixing a GPS monitor on my car. Both can be considered a felony since I had a protective order against him. The process of arresting him and indicting him was no walk in the park though. They gave him the opportunity to turn himself in instead of being arrested by an officer or being picked up. Well, when he realized the trouble he was in, he checked himself into a mental hospital, which was a loophole for him not to be taken into custody, and which meant a mountain of paperwork for the DA's office to get charges seen before a grand jury. My experience going through the DA's office could be a whole other thread, but I will spare you the details. The grand jury eventually indicts him on both counts and I awaited trial. That should be the end of the story, right? Wrong. Not even two months after he is indicted, I see him outside my house. I was driving home from a date night with my partner and we took a different road than we normally take home because we saw some cute ducks in a neighborhood yard and it caused us to take a detour. Well, thankfully we detoured that day because as we were about to rear the corner of the road we live on, we saw him. It was broad daylight and he wasn't even trying to hide his identity it seemed like. In fact, he just looked like a normal guy walking around the neighborhood. At first, I thought I was just seeing things because I didn't think he would be that careless to get that close to my house after everything. He had a no contact order against him that required him not to be within 500 feet of my home or vehicle, which he was within. As we turned the corner, I started noticing him. He notices us and immediately turns himself so his back facing us and just kind of pauses, acting like he's looking at something, probably hoping we don't notice that it's him. I tell my partner to stop the car. And when we stop, he starts speed walking the opposite direction where our car was headed. We circled back around to verify that was him, but at this point, he had disappeared into the bushes. We slowly start to head back towards the road we live on, trying to see if we can spot him. As we are going, he pops out of the bushes about 10 feet ahead of us, makes direct eye contact with us, and then starts sprinting up the road. We head his direction and try to get pictures of him. We were able to get two blurry pictures of him, but probably not enough to verify completely that it was him. 
I filed another police report and talked to his PO about what happened. The PO had come in and get a GPS monitor anklet pending investigation. I also reached out to the cop that helped me with the GPS tracker and assault case. He helped me go to every neighbor's house and ask for video evidence of the creepy stalker X. Some neighbors didn't answer, other places didn't have anything, but the place with the bushes? They had a picture slash video of him clear as day crouching in their bushes. Needless to say, he is currently in jail facing multiple charges against him. I want to delve into more details about the justice system and my grief with it, but for now, I will just end on a positive update. Thank you for those who gave me advice and showed actual concern. To those who commented that this was an ad for land, air, sea, tracking device, piss <laughs> off. I also want to acknowledge that the cop who has been helping me ever since I was first attacked. He saw me right after I was assaulted in 2022 and saw how shaken up I was. He went out of his way to do a sting operation on the GPS tracker. And he went door to door to find video evidence on my stalker. I don't think the average cop would do half the work he has done. And I will be forever grateful for that. Wow, that was wild. Oh my goodness. That's so scary though. Like he's probably not going to be in jail for life. So as soon as he gets out, you got to move. You got to I don't like I would even move states like Yeah, right? I, I, nothing is going to stop this man and he showed that. Like he showed he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, you got to move. You got to you got to disappear. Because I uh, I wouldn't imagine he's in there for life, right? Like no, stopping. he's gonna get out eventually. Yeah. Early parole, something like you can't be in the same location when he gets out. You gotta move. Yeah, I, I would say if you're in the states, move move states. Yeah, go to a different state. Yeah, or like, at least crazy. a different city. That is crazy. Oh my god, eight years that they haven't talked, and he's psycho. Still obsessed. Maybe he needs to be in that mental hospital. Oh, my gosh. That is so scary. I'm so glad he's in jail. Yeah, same. Wow. That was a crazy one. It was intense. You just found that one? It was, in, it was intense. Yeah. This morning? Yeah, that was the one I found this morning. Nice. That was a good find. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well... Yeah, I think she did all the right steps. Um, go straight to the police. Like, if you even have any inkling of something wrong, like, just trust your gut. And it's always better to be safe than, stor- than sorry. Because what were his intentions of, you know, like, tracking her? Like, what what was his goal? His yeah. end goal? What's going to be like, the end goal with that? So. Break an entry? Abduction? Yeah, it's scary to think about because... Thankfully, it didn't get to that, but he obviously had to have an end goal there. Definitely. It wasn't to... just to follow her around and just watch from afar. Nobody wants to just creep someone out, just end up in jail. Like, there's obviously yeah. dark intentions. Exactly. So, be safe out there, guys. Exactly. All right. Moving Your on turn. To me? Yeah. Back to you. Okay. Or to you. For the beginning of Teresa's story. Guys, we all know that home-cooked meals are so much better for you, but sometimes it's just not feasible to do it. With HelloFresh, they will plan everything for you. They'll do the shopping for you and it's easy to prep as well. So it's much easier and faster to get food on the table. With HelloFresh, you get to choose from a variety of menu items to suit all of your tastes and your needs. From fit and wholesome to quick and easy to family friendly or vegan options. There's going to be something for everyone to enjoy. The box that we were sent this week had such a variety of different recipes that I would never think to cook myself. And some are like very simple, like a salad. But it was amazing. Like, it was one of the best salads I've ever had. It was quick and simple. The chicken salad was phenomenal. And I just love how, yeah, you're going to get different recipes that we normally wouldn't get. When we try to cook ourselves, we cook the same thing. But HelloFresh mixes it up. So not only does it do the shopping and the proper portions for you, but you get brand new recipes that are exciting. That's my favorite part. For free breakfast for life, go to HelloFresh.com slash free threat talk. That's one free breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life just by going to hellofresh.com slash free thread talk. I'm also going to leave the link down below in the description of this episode. So that's easy for you guys to click the link and get your free breakfast for life. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the stories. Am I the asshole for selling my late wife's cake recipe to a bakery? My late wife passed three years ago. Our two kids were in their late 20s at the time. It's been a hard few years and is even harder now that I live alone. She had a lovely dark chocolate cherry cake. 
It was my favorite thing that she would make, and I always requested it for Father's Day. I am a ship baker, and I have tried to remake it from her notes. The notes are not very clear, and it never turns out correct. It is depressing spending so much time and it being wrong. I have asked my two kids to try and make it, but they refuse to. I was told that they will not figure out the recipe and to stop asking. So I went to a local baker and asked for them to figure it out. They agree as long as I gave them the permission to sell the cake in the store. It didn't take them long to figure it out, and it is almost exactly the same as my wife's. I bought one for Father's Day, and my kids were happy about the cake until I told them that the bakery did it. They are pissed I would sell their mother's recipe to a bakery. This whole week, they have been telling me how I am a jerk for this, and I am wondering if I am really a jerk. I just wanted to eat her cake again. Aw, I don't think so. I don't think so either. He didn't really, like, sell the cake recipe. He wasn't like, this is the covenant cake recipe that everybody in the family knows I'm going to sell it. He's like, he, he kind of sold a portion yeah. of it. Like, they helped him figure out the rest, and it's got to be a win-win situation, or else why would they do it? And I think it's sad. It is very sad. He lost his wife. Like, that's already hard. And then he just wants a piece of her back. Yeah. No one, everyone refused to help him. Like, he tried his best. Like... I think having this cake obviously brings joy for him and it reminds him of her. Exactly. So I think it's like, I don't know, it's a positive thing that he did that. And it's not like he made a profit off it. He didn't really sell it. Yeah. I don't think there's any malicious intent. Yeah, no. There was like, no, no malicious intent. There was nothing intent. in it for him besides just getting that that grat- gratification of, of that remi- having her, her yeah, cake that again. Rem- that reminder. Yeah. I think the kids are definitely overreacting, um, especially because they weren't willing to even try and help him. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Top comment. I think of this as a way for your wife to live on in what she created to bring happiness to others. It's not like you did it for the money. Would the bakery consider using your wife's name as part of the item name, not the asshole? OP replies, I highly doubt it. I will not ask them. They have already done so much for me and gave me the recipe with clear instructions. I am not going to bother them about their cake name. I am just happy I can eat it again. Yeah. It's a cool thought, but he's like, they've already done enough for me. I don't, I'm not going to be that annoying person. Yeah. Yeah. He's just happy to be. He just wanted the cake. Eating the cake again. That's all he wanted. He wanted the cake. Um, Are we going to, is it, we're going to make the cake? Do we have the recipe? Did you find it? Yeah, it is. Actually? Yeah, yeah, it's down in the comments. Stop! Please share the cake recipe with us. I would love to read it. One How cup you- of almost <laughs> boiling water, three-fourths cup Dutch cocoa powder. Um, So we will paste it in the YouTube video, and then we'll also post it on our Instagram if you guys want to take a look. Yeah. I'm excited to try that cake. I'm going to make it. Is cherry cake like a summer recipe? I feel like, yeah. I don't know, but next... uh next um, family, gathering. family gathering Ooh, maybe for the barbecue next weekend Ooh, that's great that's, we that actually that. is a good idea yeah let's do it perfect <laughs> boom all right moving on moving on my wife is addicted to the gym and it's ruining our marriage strap in because this is a juicy one okay trigger warnings for infidelity physical violence anger management issues the original post was february 1st 2024 My wife is 30 years old, and she's worked out and been in shape, but lately, I feel like it's becoming excessive. She used to regularly work out at a gym when she was in college. At some point, she stopped going to the gym. I think lately, just due to her schedule, and preferred to work out at home or go for runs outside. About 18 months ago, she announced she was going to get back into the habit of going to the gym. She now had a job where she's able to make more time for it. It started off normal, but slowly became more and more frequent. She signed up for classes on the weekend both days. She started going to the gym every day. Then it became the morning before work and then again later in the evening. Every single day. If she's stressed, she goes to the gym. Experience some sort of life crisis, goes to the gym. We have an argument, she runs to the gym. She's four months pregnant right now. I'm kind of surprised we even had time to make a kid. I understand that it's safe for her to work out, especially since she was already in the habit of doing it before she got pregnant, but the intensity is not slowing down. If she misses one of her normal gym sessions, she becomes irritable, like a junkie not getting her fix. It's just bizarre. Truly a case of too much of a good thing. 
Of course, she gets upset when I voice that I feel it's becoming an unhealthy obsession and that I miss spending time with her because she's there so much. She has all of these friends and a whole circle of people that she seems to prefer spending time with over me. Why don't we work out together at the gym? The gym is her time, she says. This isn't a case of me feeling insecure because she's in great physical shape and I'm a fat slob. I work out too and I'm in shape. My job really requires me to stay in shape so I can't let myself go even if I wanted to. I genuinely feel her gym habits are unhealthy now. She's over-exercising for one. There is such a thing. But worse than that, I feel it's becoming a way for her to escape everything else in life. She never actually fixed anything that goes wrong in her life. She just runs off to the gym to get some sort of mood boost and that's it. She also never gets anything done in a practical sense because how can she when she's at the gym so often? It's to the point where I have to do every chore and if food is being made, I'm going to have to do it. I don't expect her to do all of those things, but it should be at least a shared effort. People we know have commented about it to me. They've said things about how she seems different, how she sure is at the gym a lot, and many of her friends and family barely see her anymore. Some have even suggested she's having an affair with somebody there. Please tell me that this doesn't sound normal to you too. She insists that this is perfectly normal. Um, at first I thought maybe, like, I don't know, it's just a healthy obsession, but I, it does seem like, I don't know, I think I would have a problem with it. Like, if I was at home doing everything by myself, like, and you were just spending six hours of your free time every day at Twice the gym. a day, like, morning, before work, after work. I, I, I think I would get really upset as well. Like, unless you're an Olympian training for right? the Olympics. Like, if that's your job, sure. But, yeah. like, you have a job and you're going to the gym, like so often i just don't think it's necessary i don't i don't even know if it's healthy to go no it's not that much it's not right? healthy to over train because you're just wearing out your body like yeah you're consuming more than you're building so you're just breaking down your body i almost wonder if it's like a, a like a an obsessive thing about like her weight like i know he says she's not weight she's fit I know, but sometimes, you know, people think that they are overweight or, or I don't know, it's maybe. an insecurity thing. Yeah, like, maybe. I don't like being in a calorie deficit. Like some people like really like obsess over counting those calories. And if they don't go to the gym that day to burn off those calories, like, yeah, it can make them irritable and stuff. And I feel like I've been there at some point, like a couple of years ago where I was like, if I didn't go to the gym, like I was in a bad mood because I, I didn't, I wasn't in my calorie deficit that day. And it does become an addiction. Yeah. It's just like anything else. Like you get addicted to the the chemical release when you're working out. Yeah. I wish I had that addiction. <laughs> I feel like that addiction like comes and goes sometimes. Like we've had it before. Yeah. We don't have it right now. Definitely not. I definitely need to get back to going to the gym. <laughs> I was like, this is the week. This week. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> We're filming this on a Monday. So, Teresa, it's her last day off before she starts a job tomorrow. So, maybe tomorrow when Teresa's working, I'll have time. It's a holiday in Canada. Yes. Today. <laughs> it is. Okay. I have an update for you. Okay. F- 10 days later, February 11, 2024. I posted not very long ago about my wife's addiction to the gym. A compulsion, if you will. She spends most of her free time there. She often goes twice a day and sometimes even three times a day if we have a fight at night and she needs to run off instead of actually talking to me. Wow. And she won't let me go with her to the gym and refuses to go to mine. Her gym is her place. My gym is my place. That's just the way it has to be according to her. I'd love to have her come along with me. I've invited her multiple times. She's about 18 weeks pregnant right now. This is our first baby. She's worked out like crazy prior to the pregnancy and she continues to do just as hard now. I truly didn't think she was cheating on me. People suggested it in the last thread and I laughed. You can tell she's at the gym a lot. She's in great shape. So she's obviously going there. I feel really confident about the cheating issue and when I posted 9 days ago, I wasn't even considering cheating. I'm embarrassed to admit that after reading a lot of the comments in my last post, I thought maybe I was being overly confident about her fidelity. She usually always has her phone on her, but she left it on the kitchen counter and as stupid as I felt, I decided to do a quick swipe through her text. She had a current text conversation going with a guy. I recognize the name. The same name of the guy from the gym she mentions a lot. She's friends with a lot of people there. Went to one of their weddings last fall. 
I wasn't too terribly concerned until I started reading the text. Never wanted to know what a guy's dick looked like, but now I know. She was only out of the room for literally a minute or two, so I had to scroll fast. I was furious. I asked her what the fuck that conversation was about. She started yelling at me for looking through her phone. I told her she's acting so weird and the gym obsession is really bothering me, so I just decided to look and was ashamed that I did, but that I thought I'd find nothing. She said, it's nothing, it's nothing. Didn't look like nothing to me. She sir seemed pretty interested in this nothing. I wanted to know if she's been fucking him and for how long. She kept saying no. I left the house because I was furious, but not before I slammed her phone on the ground and shattered it. Mm. She was calling me all sorts of names for breaking her phone. She hit me on the back as hard as she could, and I left. Went to my brother's house. My brother and sister-in-law were shocked. Although my sister-in-law was one of the most vocal ones about my wife's gym session being weird and bringing it up to me constantly. I went home, and she was in bed crying. She obviously couldn't call me or anything else for that matter. She was laying it on thick. I didn't know if you'd ever come home. Give me a break. I took her phone to get it repaired tonight. She doesn't deserve it, but I feel like an ass breaking her phone. I still don't know how deep it goes. She won't admit to anything beyond what I saw. Was it sexting? That's bad enough. Or was it more? I'm convinced it was a lot more, but she refuses to hand her phone over and now is trying to act like I'm this terrible monster who is abusing her because I broke her phone. Not my proudest moment, but I honestly wanted to body slam her after she punched me. I have never and would never actually touch her like that. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, wait. So I'm confused. Was there a dick pic? Yeah. Oh, there was. Yeah, he saw a dick pic. Okay. Well, I feel like that's evidence enough. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, what more do you need? Yeah, he says, I wasn't too terribly concerned until I started reading the text. Never wanted to know what a guy's dick looked like, but now I do. Never wanted to know? What but... a guy's dick looked so like. So that, to me, I, I feel like he was wanting to see a dick pic there no. to like kind of solidify that. I think he's saying, I never wanted to see another guy's dick, but I saw it because there was oh. dick pics in the text combo. Well, the way he wrote that, it meant like he wanted to see one now. Never wanted to know what the guy's dick looked like, but now I know. Oh, he said, that. okay, sorry. Or, but I know now. But I know now. Okay. Okay, sorry. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. I just <laughs> want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So he did see it. Um, well, I, I don't think you need any further proof. I think, I, was it unsolicited? Like, maybe it was. He didn't have enough time to read all the texts. I feel like if I received an unsolicited dick pic, though, I would like tell you about it. Right. You know? Yeah. Definitely not innocent on her part. Yeah, I don't think so. This is, it's a form of cheating. That's definitely cheating. Sexting is cheating. Yeah. May not be like a full, 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 like a fair, but it's getting there. Yeah. If it's not actually there already. Yeah, no, this is a uh, divorce. The boss. Divorce. The boss. Okay. Want another update? Yeah. Next day, Feb 12th. Today, my wife asked me to stay home from work so that we could talk. She laid in bed all day yesterday trying to get me to feel sorry for her, but I paid absolutely no attention to her and ended up leaving the house to go to my friend's Super Bowl party. I wasn't in the mood to go, but I wasn't going to sit at home with her. It really bothered her that I left. She kept texting me things like, Who just leaves like that when something like this is happening? Who is that cold and callous that they would just leave to go to a party? I stayed home today to talk to her, and she was full of tears. She's, quote, so sorry. According to her, she really was going to the gym twice a day because she likes going there. And that's where her friends are. It makes her feel good. It's fun for her. She met this guy there and he started flirting with her. Everyone likes him. He's one of the most popular guys there. I didn't realize there were popular people at the gym. She admitted she flirted back but didn't mean anything by it. She didn't reciprocate very much at first but he gave her butterflies and she just found herself flirting back without thinking. She said it felt like when she had a crush on somebody that she was in school when she was younger. They started texting. At first, it was just friendly and nothing sexual for months. But she felt giddy every time she got a message from him. She was really attracted to him, but told him that she was married and there could actually never be anything between them. According to her, he kept flirting with her anyway and said, Sure, we won't cross that line. Until they did cross the line. She said she had tried to resist it for a while, but then one day they kissed. 
She admitted to enjoying it, but also feeling it was wrong. She must not have felt that bad because she slept with him for the first time later that night. She described it like falling in love with somebody for the first time. All she could think about was him. Is she in love with him? She doesn't know. Is the baby mine? She thinks so, but there's always a small chance that it could be his. He always used a condom, so she doesn't think that the baby is his, but they were sleeping together at the time she got pregnant. But she loves me. She can't help that. There's just this huge spark between the two of them. She doesn't know if she loves him. She doesn't know if the baby is mine. She doesn't know why she did this. She doesn't know what she thinks we should do. The nail in the coffin is when she said, You would really leave me if the baby's not yours, wouldn't you? She had the balls to ask me that. I told her, of course I'm leaving her, and I wouldn't raise another man's child. She seemed shocked. She said, really? With everything we have in all of our history, you wouldn't even consider it? She can't be serious, I told her. No, I would not consider it. She agreed to get a DNA test. She tearfully agreed, like I'm supposed to feel sorry for her about that. I don't know who this woman is. She was crying the whole time but not tears of an ashamed or sorry person. They were tears for herself and meant to try to make me feel bad. Feel bad for what? That her heart is apparently so torn? Girl, he's going to leave you whether that baby is his or not. Right? Like, (laughs) you cheated on him for months. Like, so much to the point where you need to get a DNA test because you don't know if that kid is his or not. Exactly. How do you think that you're going to come back from that? I don't know. (laughs) I feel like she's delusional. I I think so. I don't know if I love him or not. It was just a big spark between us. Oh, my God. Is there anything else? Yeah. Oh, my God. Still? Yeah. Okay. Lay it on me. Next update comes February 22nd. My wife has been reduced to a trashy daytime talk show. The woman who was once my wife, who I considered a classy woman, has turned into a complete trailer trash. Today, she announced that she's moving in with her affair partner from the gym. Oh. She's pregnant. It might be his kid. It might be mine. She's too embarrassed to get blood drawn from a paternity test. She spent about a week trying to get my attention, to get me to talk to her, to get me to beg her to be mine. I didn't fall for any of it. I've largely been ignoring her, and when we have to speak, I keep it brief. We've been living together this whole time, but I'm in a different room now and functioning separate from her in all ways. So her pouting and trying to get me to pay attention to her and giving her a gold star for not going to the gym for five days in a row didn't work. Today, she texted me that she is moving in with him. Somehow, I still do care about this person. I've already met a lawyer, though. I can care about her as a human being and possible mother of my child without being married to her. Still, it stung to hear her say that she's going to be with him. I told her that it wasn't a smart move to leave the house. I've even told her she'll probably need to meet with a lawyer. She doesn't care about anything I have to say. I don't think she needs to move in with anybody. I actually feel bad for her that she just can't be on her own. I asked her if he actually knew she was pregnant and wanted to know what story she'd been telling him this whole time. She said he knows and he doesn't care if it's my baby. He loves her and wants to be with her. (laughs) Bizarre. Can't find anyone else? Somebody who isn't a married pregnant woman? Why would you take that on? Doesn't make sense to me. He's scum, but he's good-looking scum who apparently is gainfully employed and owns his own house. So you can't tell me that my married, pregnant wife is your only option here. I just can't imagine being a single guy like that and wanting to put up with this baggage when I can have other options. And if this really is my baby, then what? They'll live with my wife and this weasel 50% of the time? I don't know how my wife turned into this mess. And she thinks it's embarrassing to have to get blood drawn? (laughs) Yeah, for real. She's embarrassed to, like, actually go and do it? Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. She seems really immature. It doesn't sound like this is love at all. It just sounds like it's lust, maybe, it, I think, on both of their parts. It's lust. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, this is. there's no way it's going to last. And I can understand, like, being with somebody for, like, 10 years, whatever long, and then someone new comes along, and, yeah, it's going to be lust, not love. And it's yeah. you made a commitment to your partner it's whether you st- you have a choice whether you stick by that or not yeah i'm sure there's going to be lots of people in everybody's future that it's it's a fresh spark like high school yeah because you're like you're comfortable with this for so long anything always new is cool and like lust is 
what we call it when it's like another human being. But anytime you start a new hobby or a new show or anything like that, you get this new cool addicting feeling to something dopamine. new in your life. Yeah, it's a dopamine fix. Yeah. Like whenever you watch a new Netflix show that like you've never <laughs> heard of before and then you watch the first episode and it's like, this is amazing. I have to keep watching all the episodes. It's exactly what it's like. So instead of cheating, guys, just find a good Netflix show. To watch. Oh yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying avoiding, but I'm saying it's like sim- It's a similar thing where your mindset is find something new. When you find a new hobby and you buy a new car, you buy a new house. Whenever there's something new, you get this lust towards that item. Yeah. Like when we first moved into our apartment, it was the best place ever. Now we've been in it for three years, and I'm ready to move out and build a house. I'm not. And building the house will be a new quote lustful experience towards building a house designing it to our needs yeah i guess it's like new and exciting anything new and exciting but when you're gonna be in a relationship you have to when you make marriage you're making that commitment that you're gonna say no to new and exciting yeah you have to you have to actively choose that person every day i actively choose you honey thanks honey me too we're not married yet and i do it every day (laughs) all right you want more more oh my god i told you this is a juicy one okay denver a word in your ear if i may you and i have talked quite a bit about microdosing a lot haven't we we really have like maybe too much but you know not all these microdosing drugs are created equally psilocybin for example have you heard of it yeah yeah i have when taken thoughtfully at sub hallucinogenic levels i'll tell you it can sharpen your focus hone your mental clarity unleash your creativity expand your mind open your heart, and ease your anxiety, all of which I think are a plus. These are all good things, right? They sound pretty good to me. Now, Schedule 35 takes a science-backed approach to microdosing shrooms. They precisely measure out every dose. They verify the age of every one of their customers. They ship out discreetly, and better yet, they give you a microdosing regimen that allows you to enjoy the benefits of psilocybin without any of the hallucinogenic effects. To get an invite code, go to www.schedule35.co. Schedule 35's goal is to destigmatize and re educate on the science and real world benefits of psilocybin, as well as making it accessible for everyone. When you guys are at the checkout on schedule35.co, don't forget to use our promo code THREADTALK for 15% off your order. That's THREADTALK, T H R E A D T A L K, for 15% off at schedule35.co. Update February 29th. My wife has agreed to a paternity test. My wife moved in with her affair partner last weekend. She didn't take very much at all. Most of her stuff is still in our house. I still get the feeling she was just waiting for me to beg her to come home, but I didn't reach out to her at all after she left. It was a strange mixture of relief, anger, and sadness. I don't think I ate at all until last night. I just never felt hungry. Drank a little too much, but I'm fine. I'm posting this update because I've received a ton of messages from people and honestly it's emotionally draining to respond to each one and to have to type the same stuff out. I just don't feel like talking about her that much. So this morning she texted me that her affair partner wants to get a DNA test done so she's going to do it. Look at that. Didn't matter what I wanted but now that he has requested it she suddenly thinks it's a great idea. She asked if I wanted to submit a sample because it's cheaper to have two dads test as part of one package. I don't even care about the cost at this point. I just want an answer. I don't have to see or interact with them at all. I just have to make my own appointment with the lab to get my cheek swabbed. So this Saturday, I'm going to do that and we should have the results within a week. I'll take what I get at this point because it's better than her dragging this out for another 20 weeks. So that's it. I'm fine. I'm going to work every day, trying to function, just feel stuck in limbo. I do miss her. Honestly, I hate that she's there with him. It makes me sick. Part of me does want to beg her to come home. It'll be even worse that I find out that it's my baby and she's there with him. Unless he drops her at that news. I won't let myself beg for her. I won't play those games with her. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I find it interesting that now the new man is asking for the paternity test, but I thought he was going to love her regardless. Right? Apparently not. Why does he want to know now? Exactly. (laughs) I assume there's another update. Yep. March 15th. (laughs) Okay. We recently had the paternity test done at the request of her affair partner, and it proves that the baby is mine. Oh. It's been very mixed emotions for me, very up and down. Originally, I thought I just wanted to be completely done with her and not have any lifelong ties in the form of a full-blown human that we shared. But I was sort of happy and relieved when I got the results. 
I'd already had in my mind that I was going to be a father for months before I found out that she was cheating. Sometimes I just have moments where I can't believe this is my life, that this is the situation that my kid will be born into, and I hate her for it. She's still living with him. All of her belongings are still here at our house. I refuse to do the work of packing everything up for her. She doesn't seem concerned about taking any of her things beyond the essentials. After we got the news that I'm the baby's father, she texted me saying that she's glad I'm the father and she knows I'll be a great dad. She was texting me new baby name ideas last night. She tried calling, but I ignore the calls. I only speak to her via text. This morning, she asked if she could come by and get a few things. I told her it was fine as I've been advised by my lawyer to not prevent her entry from the home, but I told her that he better not be with her. So who shows up with her? Ugh. The scumbag boyfriend. God. He walks right on into the house behind her like it's no big deal. She ran upstairs to get the stuff she wanted and he and I were just left standing there in the living room. He told me it wasn't her fault that he was there. She told him I didn't want him to come, but he forced his way along. He wanted to talk to me, supposedly, to tell me he understands how I must be feeling. No, you don't. Shut the fuck up. He told me he knows I probably don't believe him, but he genuinely loves her and knew he probably wasn't the father. He accepts it and then tried to assure me that he won't try to take my place with the baby and hopes that we can get along since we're both going to be in her life now. He promises that she's fine. He's looking after her. I told him that I couldn't for the life of me imagine what he wanted with a pregnant woman who was having another man's child. That I found it weird. When I told him that he didn't get out of my house, I'd punch him. I went upstairs and she was trying to find somebody th she was trying to find some things in the bathroom. I got mad, asked her why she brought him along, and told her I find it really strange that he still wants to be with her now, that he knows he has nothing to do with the baby, and that I refuse to let him have anything to do with the child. She said he talked her into coming and she's sorry and she never meant for any of this to happen, but she's in love with him now. He is supposedly what a thirty year old is looking for, not me. She's setting up a nursery in his house and I can set one up at my house and she has no intention of trying to get full custody or anything like that. She doesn't want to keep me from being involved in my child's life. How generous of her. She went back downstairs and I followed her and he was still standing there in the living room and I just walked up to him and punched him. He stumped back and fell into a table and she yelled what the fuck and ran over to him. I don't even care at this point as if he's going to call the cops. He deserved it, and it wouldn't have happened if he had just left like I told him to. Several hours later, she texted me saying she was sorry about today. He really meant what he said, and he's actually a good guy, and he cares about her and respects me. What the fuck? He respects me? He was screwing my wife in the gym locker room. I was like, you can't be serious, and she said, fine. I'm trying to have a mature conversation about this, and I can't help that we fell in love. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to hurt you, and I just want everything to be amicable. This guy stole my wife, and he's stealing my kid too. Sure, I'm the actual father, but now that they're setting up a nursery together in his house, I've tried to not feel jealous or sad. I've tried to maintain the thought that he's the trash man who picked up my garbage. Sometimes I feel that way, but the truth is that I love her, and still love her. I don't want to stay married to her on principle alone, but this is devastating me. Oof. Uh, it's, it's really interesting that he still wants to stay with her. Right? But I, like I said, I don't think it's going to last. This isn't love. Um, I think they're both delusional to think that it's going to end amicably. Like, yeah. why would OP have any intentions of being mature about this? <laughs> like, exactly. I would be petty as fuck. I would, I would try to get full custody. Yeah, that's I would, what I, I was going to say. I would do whatever I could to get full custody. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Are there any other you updates? Another update? Is there anything else? Yeah. Oh my God. This is going to take up the whole episode. Another installment of the implosion, which was my marriage. My wife is basically 26 weeks pregnant now. There actually has been much drama with her and her affair partner. I was away for a long weekend last week, and it was nice to just get away from home for a while. Only really annoying thing that happened is that I told her I'm being in the delivery room, not him. After everything she's done, she owes me that. It's not his baby. He has no right or reason to be there. I will not be the one waiting outside while my kid is being born. She said yeah, she agrees, and never planned to have him in there with her. I asked her if she's told him that, and she said no. I told her to tell him, and he'll have no part of it. 
Well, she told him, and apparently he didn't like that idea, and he started trying to convince her why he should be there. Next thing I know, she's telling me that he really wants to be there, and she's the one giving birth, so she should be able to say who she wants there, and she wants him there. I suppose he'll start making name suggestions soon, and we'll try to overrule names we've had picked out for our future kids for years. We've talked a little bit, and she told me I can have our house and the dog in our divorce. I'm requesting that we sell the house and split the profit. I already had that written in the paperwork. I'm not buying her out of our house, a house that I've made all the payments on anyway. I have a much better credit score than her and less debt. I compromise a lot because she liked the house. I'd rather be able to get my own place based just on what I want with no reminders of her. And there was already no way she was getting the dog. I already had proof that I owned him so she wouldn't really stand a chance of having the court award the dog to her. It's the one thing I told my lawyer I wanted above anything else, not including any custody issues surrounding my actual human child. Honestly, her affair partner can have her, but he will never ever have my dog, not to mention my dog is a hundred times more loyal than my wife, and some might even say better looking too. (laughs) So, So with the idea I won't be living here in this house for much longer than the baby is born, if everything moves quickly, I decide I will still prepare a nursery here anyways in case... Anyone wants to try and accuse me of not being invested slash repaired for fatherhood. I'm trying to look at the positives. It doesn't matter what colors she likes or what themes. I can do whatever I want. Honestly, we've been together for so long and have lived together for most of our adult lives. It's sort of nice not living with somebody, but sort of lonely too. I have friends and family, but it's hard to feel in the mood to go hang out with people too often. They always ask me about everything that's going on, and I'm just tired of being the topic of conversation. I got a promotion at work, which financially would have been better if it happened after the divorce, but I'll take what I can get. I feel like I'm living in this limbo right now for a lot of what I do is always framed around how will this affect me in the divorce. Admittedly, I do spy on them on social media sometimes. Guess I'm hoping to see he's been in a motorcycle accident or something now that the weather is nicer. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, but he's starting at a new company, and once that's up and running, I can always get my friends and family to leave one-star reviews everywhere. <laughs> have to find ways to have a little fun she told her family that we've split up and that she's with this other guy now her sister reached out to me to say how sorry she was her sister is a dumbass that sort of thing she told me that my wife is complaining about her affair partner that the sex is over when he's done and apparently he's really selfish with sex he doesn't do extra little things for her that she's used to me doing like clearing the snow off her car in the morning and heating it up and offering to make her food after a long day He doesn't speak her, quote, love language, and he hangs out with his friends too much. This made me very happy to hear. She's secretly miserable, and I find that absolutely delightful. I could have told you this guy wouldn't do those things just based off of the story. Exactly. I already got that vibe. Like, he is not, like, a, a, a partner that you want for the rest of your life. Like, yep, you guys were fucking in the gym locker room. While she was married. Like, come on. <laughs> exactly. He's not going to be your knight in shining, shining armor. No, like, he's the dirty boy. Yeah. Doesn't even do the sex as good, but she's so in love with him. No, you're, you're, I don't you're, think she is anymore. You were just lustful at something new. Exactly. Exactly. Consequences of your own actions. Like, I guess it is kind of uh, karmic justice. Now she's getting what she deserves. Exactly. And hopefully OP can find some uh, happiness in that. <laughs> yep. Some relief. Exactly. Is that all? There is... Oh my god. Well, uh, there's another update. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. This update is now from one month ago. From today's date. I'm a dad. I have a baby. A little girl. She was born yesterday, two weeks early. As she's done before, she was having some pains on and off. And she left for work yesterday morning. She works from home on Mondays. She told me that around 8.30, she was having contractions 17 minutes apart. The same thing happened not too long ago, and then by the evening, all the pain stopped. I was at work, so I told her to keep me posted. A little while later, she said they were 15 minutes apart, and she has some other signs that might be actual labor labor starting. I asked her if she needed somebody there with her. She said she wanted me to come be with her. I didn't even mean to volunteer myself. She was scared. I didn't even ask why she didn't call him. I left work and went over to his house. Uncomfortable doesn't begin to describe it, but there was obviously more important things going on. 
He wasn't there. She didn't even contact him. She said she just wanted to be with me and her there. She said she just wanted it to be me and her there. In her words, he hasn't seen her pee or shit herself yet, but I've witnessed all that stuff already, so she is more comfortable with me there. I really tried to be nice and supportive as possible. Set the whole thing about her affair, our marriage, everything to the side for a brief time. I don't really know what my purpose was being there, but I think she just needed somebody so she didn't feel alone. She spent most of the time stretching and doing some sort of yoga labor routine and bouncing on this huge exercise ball. I twiddled my thumbs for the most part and looked through a bunch of his belongings. I was timing the contractions and they were consistent and slowly did get closer together. So I thought it was probably actually going to happen this time. It wasn't nearly far enough along to go to the hospital yet and it was just getting close to when he'd get home. I was planning how I'd handle it when she called me into the bathroom to ask her if I thought her water broke. It wasn't like in the movies. This was a huge gush of water. So he got home and I was there. He came into the house and the first thing he asked is, what are you doing here? I think he thought something else was going on. No, you just left and went to work and left her alone when she was scared. He said he was home and he'd be with her until it was time to go to the hospital. He put his hand on my shoulder and said something like, thanks, bud. I got it from here, and we'll call you when we're on the way to the hospital. He called me bud. I told him I wasn't his fucking buddy and to fuck off. I could tell she wanted me to leave. I'm not sure she really wanted me to leave so much as she was in labor, and the tension between the two of us just wasn't what she needed, and I knew that. It was his house, so what was I supposed to do? I left and prayed that they'd actually call me instead of letting me know the next day that my kid had been born. She texted me a few hours later to say the doctor told her to go to the hospital. At that point, I still didn't know if I was going to be waiting outside or what he'd decide was best for his apparent wife and child. I was allowed to be in the room. I didn't force my way in there. She said she wanted me there too. He was there too. By far the single most awkward experience of my life and the only reason I was able to excuse it was because she told me that she wanted me there and I didn't want to miss the chance to be there when my kid was born and to hold my kid before he did. I can't imagine what the doctors and nurses were thinking. (laughs) Fucking humiliating. Mm. Then the guy tried to police what I could see. I put the baby in there. He's fucking watching and it's like this is still my wife and that's my baby. I chose to stay dignified and ignore him the entire time. I was there to do whatever she told me to do and my focus wasn't on him. But in any other setting, I don't think I would have been able to hold back. Baby came flying out. I mean, as far as labor goes, these are the nurse's words, and I trust labor and delivery nurses to know what they're talking about. (laughs) She tore very bad because the baby came out so fast. The baby is so tiny, barely 6 pounds and only 18 inches, but perfectly healthy. I went home for a short rest, although I couldn't really rest at all. I went back today, and of course he was there. Surprisingly, he said he was going to give us time alone with the baby. Not sure if she had previously asked him to do that when I showed up or not, didn't ask. He even brought us all food when he returned a few hours later. I wondered if mine was poison, but I tried to be nice. He's still not gone, so I'm wondering how long he'll be around. I just can't let myself do anything that will make her try and keep me away from my daughter now. I don't want them making it difficult for me. I'd prefer not to share a name publicly, but I can confirm that it's the name we chose for our daughter years ago. He had no say, and he hasn't said anything about the name at all. It kills me to see him holding her, though. I eventually left because it was just too much sitting there pretending to be like some bizarre threes company. I know I will get my time with her when he's not around. He's already posting them on social media. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to figure it out. I just have to find a way to be the bigger person because I won't let him or the relationship discourage me from being my daughter's dad. I totally get doing anything for your kids now, and if it means having to pretend to get along with him, I will. Oh my god. This guy is a better person than I would be. I don't know. For him to, like, be posting the kid on social media and, like, pretending, I don't know, he's the dad and, like, playing daddy and stuff, like, I would lose my mind. Yep. That's, that must be so hard to go through. Crazy hard. I could not imagine. Yeah. Crazy hard. Fuck. That just shows, like, I don't know, he, he really wants to be a part of his daughter's life and... He's willing to see past all of that fucked up shit that they're going through. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's messed up that yeah. they're putting it through it. But he's willing to be there for his daughter no matter what he has to do. Yeah. I, I commend that. Seems like a great guy. Okay. This is going to be the final update. 
It was posted eight days ago. There is another update that he posted 12 hours ago, but it doesn't have very much in it. So the link is in the description if you guys want to do more on this person's life update. And I also did skip one other previous update that he posted in that he just, you know, things have been going with the baby. He slept with somebody else. They got into an argument. Wife is super stressed out now and feels like she's drowning in new baby world with her affair partner at his house. So new update. My wife has moved home. Oh my God. This month continues to be the strangest I've ever experienced. Within hours of sleeping with this other person, I started getting texts from my wife saying that she decides she wants to move home. It's like she had some sort of sense. She was saying that when she's ready, would I come help her? I called her and told her I don't want her to come home and to be in a relationship again. She just doesn't get to decide what's going to happen. She then started to say, oh, I know. I just meant move back in. I told her I didn't really believe her and I felt like she was just jerking me around again. She says she thought about our conversation the other day, but the other day had gone so well and she thought we seem to be in a place where we can really work on fixing things. But until then, she could live in another room. She said she was completely serious about it and she wants her daughter to be in one home. I feel so mixed about everything, but ultimately I do want my daughter living in my house 24-7 and I don't want another man helping to raise her. So I took the bait. Today, I showed up at his house to help her move some things, but I anticipated I'd get there and she'd either have her mind changed or she wouldn't have been planning to leave at all, only waiting to see me do more tricks for her. They were arguing when I got there. The baby was crying, she was crying, and running around packing things in bags, and he was falling behind her, begging her to stay, offering to do anything to make her stay. He accused this of being my idea. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't really care what he thinks. It was obvious she just had sprung this news on him shortly before I got there. She was telling him over and over that she just wants her child raised in one home and that his home wasn't really their home and she was sorry she was doing this to him after everything he'd done, but she just has to give our daughter one home with her real father. We got back over to my house and she obviously was an emotional mess. I had no room prepared for her. Not 15 minutes later, he shows up at the front door. She didn't want to talk to him. He wouldn't give up and eventually he was there on my front porch loudly saying things like, that's not what you're saying when you were blowing me last night. Mm. So at that point, after I'm sure our neighbors had been enjoying this embarrassing scene for long enough, I told him that if he didn't leave, I'd call the cops. I went out there and tried to calm him down. I mean, I had to sympathize with him a little bit. She runs away. That's what she does. I may have said a few other things in my own favor and to make him realize he doesn't want to be involved in this mess. That is my wife. I don't think he'll give up so easily, though. Sounds terrible, but once she was at my house, I sort of found myself wishing she'd leave with him. I know I'd been wanting her to come home and to tell myself it's mostly due to the baby, but now I'm wondering what the hell I've got myself into. She said, I didn't really blow him last night. I haven't done anything with him since she was born. I've only been thinking about you. I told her, yeah, right. You expect me to believe it? Even if it is true, what on earth makes you think I would ever believe anything you say? Then, out of spite, I told her I slept with somebody else. I know I only told her to hurt her, and I feel bad about it now. She immediately demanded to know who. I told her it's none of her business. She claims that it is her business because we're still married. Nope, I'm not sharing. So now, we're awkwardly existing. I don't have much faith that she's going to stay here. I think she'll be back at his place within a week. I've told her that he's not allowed over here. He has no business being here. And if we're raising our daughter in the same house together, then she can't just run off to his house to be with him whenever she feels like it. It won't work that way. She says she knows and she wants me to want to be with her again and she'll prove to me that she can be a good partner. She tried to kiss me and I rejected her. She's upset and she's taking a nap now. I feel like I've dug myself into a very deep hole now. Yeah, I think he did. This is such a mess now. I think going forward, you should just kick her out and and split custody. I don't know. It's a huge mess. And like, I I can see where he's coming from. Like, at the end of the day, he wants to be around his daughter. He wants to do what's best for his daughter. He wants his daughter in his house 24-7. And unfortunately, his daughter comes with some very shitty baggage. It's not going to work. Them coexisting together. Like it's it's already a, such a mess. Like why not different it, rooms? It's a mess. It's absolutely a mess. But he, that's it's either that's the mess 
that you have with your daughter or you have no mess and no daughter? He's, I don't think it has to be all or nothing. I think they can probably split custody. Right. But he's saying he if he wants 24-7 custody. And if he wants that, this is the baggage that he gets. And yeah, he's accepted that. If that's what he wants. Just separate rooms. Couldn't be me. I mean, I think there's some families out there that the parents are separate, but they live in the same household for the kids. And the kids just grow up. This girl just seems so unhinged, though. Like, she oh, doesn't she know unhinged. what she wants. Like, she's going... She's such... Like, a flip-flopper. Very unhinged. So, like, I think, yeah, maybe some people can do this in this particular situation. I don't think it's going to work. Like... Yeah, she got a lot of drama. Yeah. Drama, drama. No, 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 no. Drama, drama. drama. <laughs> All right. That was a very lengthy one for yes, me. Yes, it was. Like I said, guys, the link is down in the description. This guy is just giving more life updates. Uh, so feel free to uh, click that link and check out what the latest updates are for him. Is it finally my turn? No, I have another one. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm done. <laughs> Your turn. I'm going. What you got? I missed. Okay, this one's sorry. This one's coming from True Off My Chest. I missed my best friend's funeral because my husband had a panic attack and I am racked with guilt. My best friend died a long, drawn-out death. She was in a conscious but vegetable state for the last six months of her life and, in selfishness, I saw her only twice in the last six months. I guess it was too hard to see her like that. I feel like a bad friend, which only makes the situation worse. My husband has major manic depressive episodes. We were trying to work on it with couples counseling, meditation, mindfulness, etc. It's up and down, but his mood has been especially worse leading up to this event. I was a driver on the way to the funeral. An argument started and he asked me to pull over and he would take an Uber home. Before I knew it, he was having a panic attack, thrashing in the seat, stomping on the floor and slapping his face. I pulled over on the freeway, but he was yelling I had to keep driving or we will be late. I tried to calm him down he was yelling and screaming and hitting himself, oscillating between how he wanted to die and how, if we didn't go, he knew I would resent him forever. He ran out of the car and down the freeway, screaming. Once I got him back in the car, he was crying for his mommy and still saying that we were going to the funeral. Obviously, I couldn't go to the funeral with him like that. I called his mom and she said she will meet us back at our house. I took him home. He was panicking that I will hold this grudge against him forever, and even though I assured him his mental health was my priority, I knew I was lying. His mom calmed him down and then left, and I took him to the doctor's. I missed my best friend's funeral. I know I should have seen her more while she was still with us, and I know I should be supportive of my husband's mental well-being. Attending her funeral was supposed to be the least I could do, and I missed it. I was a shitty friend in her last days and a shitty friend in her death. I am eaten alive with guilt." The guilt is a horrible, burning feeling in my heart and is consuming me. I lied to my friends about why I didn't make it to the funeral. I don't know why I lied. My husband finally agreed to go to his own individual therapy. He started back up with practicing gratitude and exercising, probably some other things, but I don't even care anymore. He knows something is up, but I feel like I can't say what's going on because it would overwhelm him with guilt he doesn't need. My mother-in-law called me and said, I know you were sad you missed your friend's memorial, but she was probably your guardian angel that day, guiding you to help husband. I just sat and said nothing. Jeez, from bad to worse when it rains, it fucking pours in thunderstorms. Yeah. I, I will say, though, like in the middle of the story, she says that his health is the priority, and I know I lied, and it, she feels guilty for missing the funeral. But she feels guilty for missing the funeral because she didn't really go visit her friend yeah. for the past six months. So she kind of created her she wanted own to make it up. guilt. Yeah. And that's not her husband's fault. I agree. I this like mental health, this that sounds a wild breakdown that I I can't even comprehend. But I, I will say that it sounds like she does blame her husband for missing her funeral. But that's kind of her own fault because she's put she put so much on the funeral as her last chance because she refused to go see her for the past six months. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think going to the funeral was her final way of making up for the time that she missed with her in the last six months. So 
she had so much riding on that. Yeah. She put the pressure there on herself because of her own previous exactly. actions. Exactly. And then it was just an unfortunate timing that her husband had this very uh, panic attack. Panic attack. This terrible panic attack. And yeah, like, unfortunately, like, this is a really terrible situation. But I, like, I don't think I would hold it against you. Like, he can't, he didn't choose to do that. Like, yeah, no, it, but it, it, it's tough because. She, she does and she, needs she someone does else to blame she needs someone else to blame because she, who takes who accepts responsibility nobody takes res- accepts responsibility yeah. in, in in the generalness of the world we always want to put the blame on somebody else to ease our own conscious and very rarely do people take the responsibility for that and that's kind of what she did whether she realizes it or not she put a lot on that funeral because of her past six months actions yeah i agree there is a couple of edits here. Edit one. Sorry, I myself was using the phrase panic attack. He didn't call it that. I thought it was one, but now I know that's not what it was. He himself called it a nervous breakdown. Edit two. Mm. I don't know if it matters, but the argument we were having was that he wasn't feeling well and he asked how long the funeral was going to take. I said he didn't have to come if he wasn't well, but say so now before I go on the freeway. He said I was picking a fight with him for asking a simple question, and then it developed from there. It sounds like they have more marital issues that they can't even have a conversation without turning into yeah. a fight. Yeah, and again, I think this goes back to like her trying to make up for the last few months. Like she was in her head, I think she was like planning on staying there the whole time. She had a lot to, of riding on it to show her her condolences. Her and who are you sympathy. showing it to? Because. Like, I don't know, family. She's, she's gone. Like, you should have been there for the last six months. Yeah. Edit three. Again, I used the wrong wording. My husband isn't bipolar, just regular depression and anxiety. I use the word manic as an adjective in that he gets maniacal, but not manic depressive disorder. Sorry, that was my fault. Mm. So it sounds like he just went a little crazy. I mean, who gets out of a car and starts running back down the freeway if you're not? having a little bit of a crazy moment yeah uh, i don't i mean i'm not a therapist not a psychologist or anything but yeah. it does sound like a manic episode to me i don't know yeah and i don't mean like crazy and like crazy i just mean like crazy and like could be a variable of things and i don't really know how else to describe it because yeah. it's kind of like not normal yeah yeah top comment op i think your husband's needs might be above your pay grade this behavior is beyond what you should deal with and you will grow to resent him over this and other things he makes you miss yeah, she will. But and like I'm saying, I don't think her resenting him over this is even his fault. I think that's a her problem. I think that's a her issue that she needs to self look back on. Yeah. Yeah, this one was tough. It's that, wild. Yeah. It rains and pours there. Yeah. Do you want to like go again? Should I? Because like <laughs> mine was so long. I feel like they haven't. Nobody's heard your voice this episode. I know, right? I've been quiet over here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like I'm like raw over here. You were talking for like 45 minutes. <laughs> but you guys enjoyed that, right? <laughs> okay, I'll go again. Am I the asshole for refusing to leave my girlfriend to be with my wife? My wife and I have been separated for three years. Before that, we were together for 10 years and married for nine. I loved her very deeply and were very happy. We had our children who are 12 and 10. After the children, the sex became something I had to beg for. She never initiated it, and I got rejected 99% of the time. At first, I would say something, and she would say I was nagging her. Then I asked her to go to marriage counseling, and in one of the sessions, she just snapped and said that we have our children now, so what is the point of sex? I give her that she seemed to regret it immediately when she said it, and said it was just a joke because she felt cornered by the therapist. She tried to disprove her statement by paying me attention, but it only took a week for her to go back to her old ways. That's when I decided I would drop the whole subject. I thought when she wanted sex, she could talk to me. This was eight years ago. We never had sex until about a year before separation. I told my wife that I was unhappy and wanted change and maybe marriage counseling again and sex therapy, but she was dismissive and said that I was nagging and why couldn't I just be happy? She was happy and didn't think we had a problem. I did love her still by then, so it was hard for me to leave because we often leave when the love is gone. 
It took me a year to put my affairs in order, and I told my wife that I was leaving her. I found a rental near my house so we can co-parent easier. I started meeting women for casual sex, but two years ago I met my girlfriend. She is amazing in every aspect. I realized that I have true feelings for her early on, but we kept our relationship private for a while. Everything was good and everyone was happy. Now I have made my relationship public a week ago and I got a call from my mom and she asked me to visit her. She told me that my wife wants us to start counseling and therapy to reconcile. I wasn't sure what to tell her because I have never told anyone the reasons for our separation. So she called my wife and my wife was there within five minutes, like they had planned this. My wife said that she promised to make changes and that she has been thinking about it. She loves me and we are a family. My mom said I was selfish for throwing my daughters away for a woman. Then my mom left to do shopping for dinner and my wife came on to me and tried to kiss me and touch me and said that she was willing to give me what I wanted and start counseling. I backed away because I felt like I was betraying my girlfriend. I got home and I told my girlfriend everything. She didn't say much more than I should make this decision myself. She probably feels guilty for standing in the way my children getting their family back. But I don't love my wife and I don't want her pity or doing things for me. I want my girlfriend who wants me and gives me herself willingly. But now this turned into me choosing a woman over my daughters. Jesus. Am I the asshole? Jeez. So it goes from bad of not having a sexual relationship to just freaking shit decision here. Like, what just happened? That's wild. Yep. What do you think? Is he the asshole? No, I don't think so. <laughs> she already, like, she had, like, years, six, seven years of no sex life. I think, yeah. I think she didn't realize that he was actually going to move on. And I think she just probably thought, like, I don't know, he needs time, even if that's years of time. That's not fair to him. It's not fair. It's not fair. I think she just got jealous once she found out that he moved on. He had a new girlfriend. But it is weird, I will say, that they weren't divorced by that time. Yeah, that's a long time. Top comment. You've been separated for three freaking years. Why haven't you filed for divorce already? Especially after finding your new girlfriend. File the papers and stop sitting on the fence. Hmm. I think maybe, yeah, he should take accountability for that, for not, I don't know, maybe he's holding on to something too. Yeah, what would it be? I I, I would assume it's the kids. Possibly. Like, he has one foot still in the door. Yeah. It's difficult when kids are involved. Yeah. Uh, There's a reply to that top comment. Main issues, unless OP says differently, are likely he will get severely fucked over financially in a divorce. Like worst case scenario is loss 70 to 80% of his income and loss of half his present assets. Not counting the house she will stay living in, plus legal costs. He may not have wanted to make waves for the kids since being divorced wasn't directly necessary for him. And or he was afraid to lose most of the custody in divorce. Or just inertia. Many, if not most people, generally don't like to shake the boat and make waves without good reason. Now he has a good reason, though. Yeah, I think that's all fair. Um, yeah. I never think about, like, the financial aspect yeah. of divorce. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably that and also, like, not wanting to rock the boat. Yeah. What do you think he's going to do? I feel like most people usually stick with what's what they know yeah rather than choose to move on i feel like that's human nature yeah exactly so uh there is no update but uh i hope he does whatever is best for him i agree all right i'm gonna give a trigger warning before i even get into the title of my next story uh trigger warning for sexual assault and talks of rape title I found out I have a daughter who thinks I was her mother's rapist, but it wasn't rape. What's next? I received an email last week from a woman claiming we are a DNA match and she is my biological daughter. It was a long and emotionally charged letter. She said she knew she was a child of rape and while she had no desire to form a relationship with me, she wanted me to know that she existed and to understand the pain and anguish I had caused her and her mother and grandparents. The letter was gut-wrenching. I was shocked but also skeptical. 
I have been married for 25 years and I have three great kids. I have never raped or abused a woman ever. I thought this had to be a prank or a scam. I had done a home DNA ancestry testing two years ago and it had not shown a child I was aware of. But when I logged into my account, there she was. I did some sleuthing and figured out her mother was a woman that I had dated for about a month during our first semester of college in the mid-1980s. We broke it off mutually and remained friendly. The very last night of the second semester, we hooked up at a dorm party and went to my room and had sex. It was a casual hookup and I remember it was 100% consensual and very passionate, also unprotected. Afterwards, we went back to the party and had a great time dancing and mingling with friends. We both went home the next morning for summer break. Terry didn't come back to college the next year, which I gave little thought to since we weren't close and hadn't bothered to communicate all summer. One of the reasons Terry and I were incompatible was religion. She was Catholic and I'm Jewish. I was not religious, but she had grown up in a strict household. My suspicion is that when she discovered she was pregnant, she told her family she had been raped rather than admitting to premarital sex with a Jewish ex-boyfriend. But who knows, maybe she had other reasons. It killed me that I have a daughter in her 30s who has been fed lies about her father. I can't imagine growing up thinking I was a product of rape. That has to be so hard psychologically. I'm in pain for a child I didn't even know existed until a few days ago and who hates me. I have been debating on what to do. I have not written back to her. I badly want to tell her the truth in a way that she can believe. But how do I do that? My wife, who has been a rock for the last few days, keeps telling me to give this some time and thought. My best friends say I should hire a lawyer. I don't know what to do and it's eating me up. So I need some advice, please. What the fuck? Oh my god. (sighs) Advice. Um... I would maybe reach out to the mom first before replying. Yeah. I think. I think. I don't know how you would get in contact with her. Um, I, Because, okay, on one side, it sounds like, from his perspective, it wasn't rape. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I, I feel like some people it depends was alcohol involved was it actually consensual did he think it was consensual maybe she truly did think it was rape i don't know so that's why i would maybe go to the source first and see why he was receiving this letter 30 years later from his daughter who he didn't know existed and why she was fed this lie and see what her reaction is yeah because I, I don't want to make assumptions here. Like, yes, we only have one side of the story. Exactly. So, and, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I I would hope that he is telling the truth and it wasn't rape. And it was both consensual and both parties. Um, but, but perspective I, is a thing. You never know. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think I would go right to the source first before replying to the child. Or yeah. Not child, but... I just, Adult child. Just, I just think when it rains, it pours. Like, not only do you find out you have a 30-year-old daughter that yeah. you never knew existed, but then you find out that she thinks you're her you're mother's rapist. Yeah, yeah, the whole whole entire time. So there's an update. Okay. I hired a lawyer. He recommended that I respond to my daughter's email to unequivocally deny the rape allegation. Oh. I wrote her a short message and described how and when Terry and I met. I was careful not to attack Terry and to offer sympathy. I explained that our sex was consensual. A week went by with no response. Two days later, my daughter wrote to me and said Terry now claims she was raped a month after she and I had sex and that she was told by her doctors that the baby was born premature eight months later. She's basically saying she was misled by her doctors. I find that very hard to believe. But if it is true, it is awful. And if it's not, I guess it gives Terry a way out without exposing her big lie, which may be best for everyone. Yesterday, I spoke to my daughter for the first time. She was crying and so was I, so it wasn't easy to say much. Before we hung up, I told her that I loved her because she's my flesh and blood. I hoped we could get to know each other and meet my grandchild. 
She sobbed so much after that. She says she's been waiting her whole life to hear those words. My wife and I told our kids about a week ago. They are teenagers and they took it very well. All three are interested in meeting their new sister and niece. My wife, my beautiful, caring, bestest friend ever, she's been nothing but supportive. She has offered that we invite my daughter and granddaughter to visit over the Christmas holidays, even suggesting we pay for the airfare and offer them our guest room. My daughter is going to call me again tonight, and I'm going to propose she come, or offer to fly to her if she's more comfortable. We have a lifetime of catching up to do. Meanwhile, as for Terry, I feel like my daughter and I were robbed. I don't really want to dwell on it. She hasn't reached out to me, and I don't plan to either. Although, I'm prepared to be cordial if she does, and to listen to her story, and be open-minded. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to say that it was a lie, because I feel like a lot of women aren't believed in situations like these. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, as OP, wouldn't you want to get to the bottom of it, though? Like, wouldn't you want to reach out and, like, find out what happened? I don't know. I don't know. But, so, sorry, they said that she was raped a a month after, and that the baby was born prematurely? Yep. So isn't there a chance that the baby isn't his? Like, well, they oh, found the DNA, DNA test. test. Okay, they okay. Found, she found him through the DNA. Got test it. To prove. Okay. I think I'm a little bit confused. Well, she's saying that she claims she was raped a month after school by someone had, else. By someone else after school ended, so she never even knew that it was Terry's. She thought it was that oh, person, okay. and the baby was born premature at eight months okay got it but that obviously wasn't the case because they had sex one month before then the baby was born at nine months nine months okay i see i understand that would be a big coincidence if she was raped one month later and the baby was premature by one month and like the doctors lied about that like, why would, why the, would the doctors lie? lie? How would the doctors have that misinformation or something? Yeah. I don't want to... I don't know. I don't want to say she's lying, but... Yeah. We don't know. I'm not saying it. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying a little bit of a, a coincidence versus being a normal baby at nine months when they had sex and he is the father versus now it's premature and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that is crazy. I, I'm glad that it's a happy ending that like they're welcoming her and inviting them to family christmas and stuff like yeah i think that is a great way even after 30 years like a little awkward at first wouldn't you want to just like meet for coffee or something well i think they went through all that already no, no? so they're on the phone they're like live in different uh live some different oh places. okay okay and then they're inviting her to family. Yeah, yeah, come stay for Christmas for a week come that sleep is, at our house and stuff <laughs> that's a lot yeah but yeah i guess they're they are trying to m- like make, make up, up for, for lost, lost time, time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i mean that is a happy ending yeah yeah it is that's that's wild though can you imagine no like i don't know <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> you slept with so many freaking girls what if you have a little little denver coutine <laughs> running around <laughs> i do think about that sometimes yeah um yeah i don't know i hope not <laughs> I feel like I was always safe, and I, I, I mean, I guess technically, like, there could have been if nobody wanted to reach out back to me, but I was always really nice, so I wouldn't imagine why nobody would want to, like, notify me and make me take, I hope res- so. make me take responsibility. I hope that's not the case, and we don't get a, a letter in the mail one day. <laughs> I, I... I had one scare one time. What? Yeah. When? Like four years before I met you, three okay. years before I met you or something. I hooked up with this one girl on a Friday. Okay. And then on Monday, she told me she was pregnant. Oh, I think you told me this. Yeah. So on a Friday, we hooked up. <laughs> and and then on the Monday, she was like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like. <laughs> Listen, I'm no expert. I have no doctor. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but 
isn't it too early yeah. to know? Yeah. And she was like, my mom's a nurse and I had my, my blood drawn this morning. And I just got the results back this evening. And it says that I'm pregnant. And I'm just like, okay. I don't know if this is right or wrong. I don't know if this is a thing. I don't know the right answer here. I don't think so. Is this possible? I don't know. So I'm like, what can I do? (laughs) What are you planning to do? And then she said that she was getting an, an abortion. And then it just got weirder and stranger after that it what was do you mean? like was she asking for it you? was like monday no she never asked me for any money i was like do you need me to pay for it is there a cost to it i never got asked for any money i wasn't allowed to come i wasn't allowed to go to it i was like do you need should i come when's the appointment can i come what can i do for you mm. i just met this chick like it was a tinder hookup a week ago like f- less than a week ago and literally she's like the next friday and she, and she, I wasn't allowed to come. I wasn't allowed to pay for it. And I wasn't allowed to meet with her again. She didn't want to, like, get coffee and talk about anything. And it was, like, all over text. And then after the supposed appointment happened, the text said, this is her best friend, Emily, or something. She, you're a terrible person. And, you know, you should have been there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I asked to be there. I tried to be there and do all the responsible things and stuff. Oh my god, T. So I just had so many red flags going off and I'm like I I don't know. I feel like I'm I like like what's the end goal? What was the end goal? If she was lying. Yeah. What was the end goal? Yeah. Because I didn't maybe maybe she wasn't lying then. Exactly. (laughs) So that's why I'm like I'm so confused. I'm like it's so early, it's so weird. I feel like I should be getting fleeced for like five hundred bucks or something. But I wasn't. And then I wasn't allowed to come. So then I was like, what is the end goal here? So maybe she wasn't lying. And then eventually just went away. I don't, I actually don't know if you can find out if you're pregnant that fast. Right? I have no idea. I have no idea either. I'm Let like, us know in the comments. Yeah. Anybody a nurse? Is that possible? <laughs> Let us know if you're that girl. <laughs> oh my God. Oh can my you God. imagine she's listening? Oh my God. That'd be insane. Okay. Google says... Usually about two weeks after you conceive. It'll show up on a blood test? Google. You can do a test on your first day your periods do. The test measures a hormone called something in your urine. For results to be positive, your body must be making enough for the test to pick it up. About two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay. What about if it was a blood test? That's a urine test. Oh, urine. Your doctor can give you a blood pregnancy test as early as 11 to 14 days after ovulation. After ovulation. This was four days after we had sex. Not even three if you had it on the Friday. Yeah, Friday to like Monday. <laughs> so that's the. I think that's the closest call that I've had. Okay, well. It scared me. Yeah, for sure. Let's hope no other scares. You want to do an interest and ancestry test? I know, I'm good. I haven't had a baby. No shit. No <laughs> shit. Wow. Wow, yeah. I know, I'm good. <laughs> like, there was even a question over there. But why are you asking? Do you want to do an ancestry test? Like, should I do an ancestry test? <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, sure. Maybe you should. I don't know. What are the chances, though? Like, how, how old would the kid be if you did have one? We've been together for almost seven years. Yeah, so... So, uh, the kid... Would be, like, ten. So. Ten or eleven. I'm sure they're not doing ancestry tests at 10 or 11, right? Maybe they're waiting for me. That's the only way to know, right? If someone else has done an ancestry test. Yeah, they have to do it too. Yeah, 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 they have to do it too. (laughs) I'm not ready to know. Maybe we can check in like five or 10 years. uh, That doesn't fit in my life plan right now. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds terrible. (laughs) Why? I haven't done it already. Why can't I keep holding out? I'm sure you're fine. I'm sure there's no baby Denver's. No, I'm pretty confident I'm good. But okay. you never know. <laughs> what if someone sat on the toilet seat? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> there's the there's the joke of like, can I be pregnant? Like I sat is it can it be happening from sitting on the toilet seat? Oh. I think it was from house. I think it was a joke uh from house. Okay, sorry, I didn't get it. My bad. Okay, let's move on. Me, right? It's me again? Yeah. It's back to you. Good. Anybody else miss Teresa's stories? 
This one's coming from r slash thread talk. Woo. Am I the asshole for sending my dying ex to prison? Oh. Did you read this one? No. Okay, good. <laughs> that just sounds dark. Yeah. Trigger warning, domestic violence slash abuse and drug abuse. I, 21 female, work as a dancer in a nightclub. I became acquainted with one of my customers, Jay, 53 male, and we started dating soon after. A little about Jay. He's very generous, and it was not unusual for him to come into the club and spend hundreds at a time. He's a very respected and well-liked person in the community, and is a widow plus single dad. He's the person taking the kids in the community for ice cream and helping old ladies cross the street. He's a sick man and is dying with a couple of years left to live, but is really in shape and he used to be a pro fighter. He's an addict with bipolar disorder. We have done a lot of drugs together at the start until I found out that he is an addict and told him that we would never do that together again. I know our quote unquote relationship was very inappropriate, but I grew to have love for him and everything was great at the start. He showered me with compliments and gifts often and would give me money by the hundreds all the time, which I never asked for because I didn't have to. He always offered and didn't take no for an answer. He's not rich, but has his own business and does pretty well for himself. I stopped working to spend more time with him and he made sure I had whatever I needed. There was a point where he was the person I saw the most between all my family and friends. He got antsy while we were apart and I genuinely enjoyed his company, so I was staying over a lot. I even had space in his closet for my things. Fast forward to about five months into this relationship, and we are all in. I've met his daughter, mother, friends, everyone. Jay was still the kind, generous man I knew him to be, but this was around the time he started nitpicking everything I did. He didn't agree with me going out with friends or posting on Instagram, or even me throwing a party for myself. He was very insecure, and anything I did seemed to have bad intentions behind it in his mind. I feel the need to say that I am a stripper, but outside of that, I lead a very average life comparable to any 21-year-old girl. He just seemed to start having problems with anything I did slash said. I was walking on eggshells around him at all times at this point, and even admitted to him that he was my main source of my anxiety. Business was slow for him at the time, and with that came stress. He stopped giving me much which was understandable, but did promise to pay for a $1,000 Airbnb for one of my trips, plus $1,000 for me to replace my phone during this time. He told me he would reimburse me for these purchases. However, he never did. I never brought it up because he had already done so much for me and was going through it at work. I never demanded more from him and only ever gracefully accepted what he wanted to give me. This is when everything turns to shit. For context, I grew up never celebrating my birthday besides closing out candles on a cake. No party or gifts or celebration. I finally turned 21 this year and decided to celebrate with a birthday party since it's a big milestone. Earlier into our relationship, I found myself talking to Jay about it and told him it would cost me $10,000 to do. He shrugged it off and immediately told me not to worry about it, changing the subject. Over the next couple of months, I kept him updated with the planning and told him the date of when I would need to put a deposit down for the venue to hold my date. Well, the time comes to pay and he acts totally blindsided. I told him that I only needed the deposit and could handle the rest. He denied ever saying that he would help me with it and was now treating me as if I was forcing him. We got into a big argument and I snapped because I felt unheard. I had not been working because of this relationship so I really was relying on him to keep his promise to me. This party is really important to me, and I tried explaining that it wasn't about the money, but the principle of it all. He was upset and made me feel really guilty for even accepting his help in the first place. I told him I didn't even want it anymore, but he insisted once again, and he paid $5,000 in cash for the deposit. Jay had let it be known that he was taking money from his business to help me out, which made me uncomfortable accepting even more. He wasn't happy about it, but he ended up keeping his promise. For this next part, I should note that he's threatened to break up with me several times and has even gone as far as packing my things up and telling me to get out of his house out of nowhere. Coming home from a trip, Jay calls me and tells me to come over because he missed me and doesn't like being away from me from so long. I agree, but after a red-eye flight and unpacking, I fell asleep and ended up being an hour or two late to his house. He locked me out. 
He usually leaves the door open for me, but his daughter ended up letting me in. I go upstairs to find him upset, and after a little begging for us to please have a good night, he tells me he's done with me, starting to pack up my things once again. He thought I was cheating on him and kept saying things like, I'm not your wallet, and I have a daughter to take care of, and you just use me. I knew he was taking his work stress out on me, still angry about having to pay for my party. At this point, I was over him and his situation. I'm young, but I know what abuse looks like. Well, he ends up following me outside, and before I knew it, his hands were wrapped around my neck. I lost my breath for a second and started yelling for help as loud as I could as soon as he released his grip. I got in my car, despite him trying to stop me and tried to apologize, and I drove to the nearest police station, accidentally driving over his foot in the process. I was in shock and crying my eyes out until I filed the police report. This was the first and only time he's put hands on me. They granted me a temporary order of protection and arrested Jay. The next day, I went to urgent care as my thumb was sprained. I blocked Jay and tried to get back to my life. I started working again and honestly felt like a weight has been lifted from my shoulders. That lasted until he showed up to my job, breaking the restraining order. He paid his way out of jail and had been quote-unquote missing me. He didn't seem to come with ill intentions and had the delusional thought that he could apologize his way out of this one. He had a habit of thinking sorry could fix whatever he did and did not mean after the fact. Jay got me the job at the club I currently work at and I never told management about the order of protection out of embarrassment. I think it's important to note that as a dancer, it's hard to find a club I feel safe working in and the one I currently work at is so nice. I dread having to find another place to work and decided to keep working there until I find somewhere else. He is friends with the people who run the place, so I really felt like I couldn't tell them I got their lifelong friend arrested. Long story short, he leaves after realizing I want nothing to do with him and makes a huge scene, worrying about me calling the cops and sending him to jail. I'm sure if I called, he would have gotten years, especially because he's been convicted of violent crimes in the past, bar fights mostly. About a week ago, I received a call from the DA stating that Jay is denying ever hurting me with video evidence from his ring doorbell. I knew he probably shortened the clip and is lying to the detectives about everything because this very well did happen. I talked to some of the girls I work with and they made me feel bad for not turning him in. They were saying things like, this is how these assholes get away with things. But honestly, despite him being an abuser, I still have sympathy for the situation. He's a dying single dad and a widow. I don't want to be responsible for taking him away from his daughter because he's all she has left and is truly an incredible dad. The DA informed me that if I don't want to press charges that I will no longer have an order of protection, but I don't want to go to court. I just want him to leave me the hell alone. Would I be the asshole for turning him in? P.S. I love you guys and I'm so happy I found your podcast. I like listening to true crime, but my anxiety has been so bad that I can't anymore. Y'all are definitely helping me fill the void for me, lol. I hope you guys get around to this because I could really use some advice. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't be the asshole. But she's not thinking about him. She's thinking about the daughter. That's very big of her, like, very big heart. Like, you're never the asshole for doing the right thing. Um, I can see why you wouldn't want to because of the daughter, but you got to put yourself first. If you're not willing to, like, step up and say it, then maybe you should move so he can't find you. Yeah, but I, it is tough. Like she said, like, as a as a dancer, like, I would imagine most of those places are unsafe. So yeah. to find a, a place of work where you do feel safe, like, yeah. you wouldn't want to leave that. No, exactly. So that, it is tough. It's, that's tough. Usually these people are unhinged and they don't stop. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I replied on the post and I just said, um, like my advice would be to put yourself first and, um, turn him in just because you don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. Like either to you or maybe to another girl. Like you never know until it's too late. Exactly. And yeah, like I, I would hope that like, I don't know, take the the correct precautions. Yeah. Everything's fine until it is not. Yeah. So this is a really scary situation. Um, and it's tough when you have had love for someone too. Like it seemed like, you know, they were actually in a relationship before. And yeah. so it's tough. Like, yeah, you're not, 
you wouldn't just be affecting his life. You would be affecting the daughter's life. But at the end of the day, the like, it wasn't your actions that would get him there. It's his actions. It's his own actions. You telling the truth is not your fault. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I, I don't think you should carry guilt for that. I, I don't think you should feel like it's on you if something, if he does go to jail for this. Like, yeah. it this was... Like, the, the consequences of it is his own actions. Yeah, if you're not willing to go through all of that, I think you got to try and find a new place. Like, if you're not willing to go through all the legal yeah. stuff, because it, it's daunting and it can be tough and it's a huge task, then the next best thing would be to move and find a better, better place, which is still another scary, daunting task. Yeah, um, so she does reply to my comment with a little bit of a more clarification. Thank you for your reply. I appreciate it. Another concern I have with going to court is the lack of evidence I have against him. I didn't have any bruises or anything like that. He also had a video of me hitting him for a time when I was upset at the emotional manipulation he was constantly putting me through. I know some people would say that I was wrong and I agree I should have never done that and assured him that it would never happen again and that I was sorry. It was kind of a shove and I didn't mean to hurt him. Not like I could anyways. I was just really frustrated after going through so much with him. He's a six foot, 200 pound man. I'm a pretty small girl. So I don't know if the court would count me shoving him as domestic violence as well. I think it's different seeing as he was unfazed and clearly not hurt. His family are also heroes after their contribution being first responders on 9-11. His two deceased family members have street named after them. He's close with a lot of cops as well. Literally everyone loves this guy. There's a part of me that wonders if going to court would be worth the stress. I've had to go to court and be a witness before against a family member who did end up going to prison. So this whole thing seems too familiar to me. My anxiety gets so bad sometimes I don't want to push myself over the edge. I don't even have a lawyer, nor would even want to pay for one. I'm hoping that if it comes to it, him breaking his restraining order should be enough. Yeah, that's wild. Oh, but I that's think really in this tough. situation, like you'd have the DA on your side, right? Like you wouldn't need a, maybe you wouldn't need a lawyer because the DA would be prosecuting him. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think I would hope, yeah, him breaking the restraining order would be enough. Yeah. I don't know. I'd hope so. Let us know if you have an update for this. Yeah. If you're listening. Um, I hope you're doing okay. And yeah, just try not to hold so much guilt. Like, Yeah, don't hold the guilt. It's Nothing, not your fault. It's not your fault. All right. Um, I'm thinking in the future we should do an episode that's just only uh, orth- authentic stories from Pet Talk Podcast. Sure. There's going to be a lot of them now. Yeah, I haven't read. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. I need to catch <laughs> I haven't up. Haven't read all of them. So I think uh, in the future, then within the next five episodes or something, we're gonna do just an r slash thread talk podcast episode, and yeah. we'll just pick all of the original stories because I know a lot of people they repost stories from other threads to kind of bring to our attention, which we appreciate. We got some really good stories from that, but we're gonna do an episode of like just only if they're posted on Thread Talk, full story. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Back to me? Yep. Back to me. Before I get into the next episode, I just want to thank everybody for their support. Thank you guys so much for smashing the like button on YouTube, dropping the comment down on Spotify. And if, uh, if you guys are a big fan and you guys have been smashing through all of our episodes and you're running out, we have bonus episodes on Patreon. Yes, we do. We huh. have a whole 11 now. Yeah. Or maybe 12 when this comes maybe out. Maybe. Big Wait, library over there on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. um, so we appreciate you guys supporting us on Patreon as well. And uh, you get a little bit more in detailed life updates if you like that stuff about us, too, on yes. Patreon. Yes. We, we, we give you the shameless stuff. <laughs> That's true. We appreciate all of you who have been listening with us and joining our Patreon. Yeah. Thank and you. Patreon, bonus episodes every single Friday. So that's one a week, four a month, maybe five, depending on the month. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Back to me. I'm pretty sure my boss stole my identity. There are two new credit cards on my credit report with a total balance of about $15,000. My credit score has dropped from a 805 to a 550, <gasps> and I was written up when I confronted him about it. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. 
Trigger warnings for financial fraud and identity theft. So the original post comes from May 15th. I don't think those trigger warnings are necessary. <laughs> yeah, it just says that. <laughs> original post is from May 15th. I work for a relatively small business. There's only about 50 of us, and I've been working here for about three years. The owner of the business I know has been stressed out over the financials for the last six months. We've gone from fairly profitable to slightly unprofitable since December. Since I've worked here, I can think of a two-month span of time that the business hasn't been profitable. But even then, we were only down a couple thousand dollars total on that second month. Well, back in January, we had our worst month since I've worked here, and it only improved slightly for February. The credit cards on my credit report were opened in February and looked to have been maxed out by March. Fast forward to last week and my boss, the owner of the company, is out of the office for a day and a coworker grabbed the mail. It had a discovery bill with my name on it. She gave it to me and I was extremely confused. It was definitely my name but the company's address with the suite designated solely for my boss. I opened it up and found out that I owe more than $10,000 and my payments are more than two months late. I called Discovery and they emailed me a description of the charges, about a dozen of them, all with the headings of my company. It was clear someone ordered a card in my name and literally paid my company about $10,000 from the card back to early March. Of course, I was livid and immediately disputed all the charges. I checked my credit report and there was another card which seemed to have been opened around the same time with more than a $5,000 balance. I called the bank and they sent me the transaction list. Same thing. At this point, I was pretty sure it was my boss, as I know he has access to my social security number from my hiring paperwork, and the address to both cars was his suite number in the building. As I'm talking with my work group about it, someone else said that they had their identity stolen in January, but they got it taken care of through TransUnion. They said the charges went to a supplier of ours. Turns out there was a third employee from our work group of five who had their credit stolen at the start of the year when they checked their credit after hearing us talking about it. For whatever reason, they are having that credit card company send them the statement as they couldn't be emailed. Last Wednesday, I confronted my boss about the credit cards and he denied everything. He said whoever it was probably just used the work address because they have found it through my LinkedIn. He also said to wait 120 days before disputing anything, which I found to be extremely weird, but the credit card companies would take care of everything. I decided not to take his advice and disputed everything on the credit websites that day. Monday comes along and he calls me in asking if there's anything new on my credit since the other two have talked to him about their issues as well. I told him I disputed everything and then he got pissed. He was enraged that I disputed it so soon and said something that caught my attention. So it was you who was causing the holds. I later found out the company credit merchant account is now on hold for fraud. This morning I get called in again and this time was given a written reprimand for my quote unsatisfactory performance due to my lower sales numbers for last month. I've never gotten a written reprimand ever at this job and a separate one for unsatisfactory performance for a recurring customer canceling their subscription because they went out of business. I guess my question is, where do I go from here? I feel a constructive dismissal is coming on. If the company doesn't go to business first, I'm also concerned about the credit card accounts as I haven't heard anything back yet when I disputed them. Get a lawyer. Get a lawyer? Get a lawyer. He's committing fraud. Right? And I would wait actually until he fires you. So, you'll have you'll have enough evidence, I think, to win. So top comment on the original post. File a police report. Most likely you'll have to do this anyway to get the accounts off your report. $15,000 is a substantial enough that the issuer may refuse to remove it without proof. Honestly, you need legal advice at this point though, so that's where you need to go next. There are legal advice subreddits that may be able to help point you in the better direction. Document everything. Witnesses, times, dates, quotes, and email it to yourself. Get your resume together. Whether you're fired or not, the writing is on the wall. Start yeah. looking for a new job. Definitely. And freeze your credit. Freeze your credit with all three major bureaus. Make an account on your state's unemployment website so no one else can make one in your own name when and if you're fired. Freeze check systems. 
There are a few threads on other subreddits with a good list of what to lock down, and here's a good place to start. Hmm. So the original post was in May. We got an update coming in June 26th. Okay. Update. I no longer have a job. I received three more reprimands and was terminated last Friday. I went to the police a couple days after the original post. However, four other employees have also had their identity stolen in a similar way. Oh my god. We've all gone to the police, and last Monday, a detective showed up at our office. He only ended up staying about 10 minutes. On Tuesday, someone else, who we think was an attorney, spent about the entire day in my boss's suite. On Friday, I was terminated, and at least a dozen other people were laid off, including the others I know have had their identity stolen. I'm going to take about a month to just chill before trying to find something else. I feel like I owe it to myself after the last six weeks at work. One of the accounts is now off my credit, and I expect the other one to come off any day now. It sounds like they are starting to come off my coworkers' accounts as well. I'm not sure what's going to happen next from here, but I hope my old boss gets what's coming to him. I'll start working on my resume next week, and I'm going to file for unemployment, even though I know he's going to fight it. I'll keep checking my credit daily as well to know for sure if the other card is going to fall off. Yep, we saw it coming. Um... I, what did he think the outcome was going to be? He was just going to be get able away with it. Yeah, get away with it. Like what? Like obviously they're going to file a police report, and you're not going to be able to get away with it. Like yeah, and you're also going to be sued for unlawful termination. Exactly. So you're <laughs> you're just doubling down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but like I mean, you can only sue people if they're willing to give you money. It sounds like he's done has no money using other people stolen money to just keep his company afloat i guess paying for invoices and stuff well i'm sure he has assets a house maybe yeah the like the court will go for that stuff right if they can be a long ass process yeah but it's so worth the, it he fucked up your well your... the nice thing with credit cards is like you know discovery is just like okay you didn't do it we'll eat it Essentially what happens, right? They'll try and charge back where the money went to, try and get that money back. But at the end of the day, you know, they kind of got it. I would hope so. Well, that's what happens with credit card companies. Yeah. That they kind of have to eat it. It's mm. like whenever we've disputed anything. Yeah. Like the credit card will refund us and then they'll try and get their money back from where they sent the merchant. Yeah. And if they didn't, they eat it. I mean, that's their business model. That's why we use credit cards. Yeah. Because we have that protection. Yeah. If I didn't have that protection, I just use my debit for everything. Mm. That's why I don't mind buying things online. I use it for the points. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. I I was, you know, doing some Facebook shopping and I'm scrolling through Facebook and then like dirt bike gear pops up and I'm like, this is, this is crazy price. This is too good to be true. This is $100 for a $700 helmet. This is $150 for a $700 motocross boots. Like this is too good to be true. But you know what? I'm willing to try it because I know my credit card company will like give it back if this website turns out to be fraud and it was and they did when was this well, was a couple months ago. remember i told you about it i'm like I hey remember. i'm pretty sure this is a scam but if it's not it would be a crazy good deal hmm. so then i placed an order and then i never even got like an authentic like receipt it was like a confirmation order that was sketchy and then i tried to like right after the email i was like hey you know what let's cancel this and they never replied or anything so then i told credit card company and they're like okay and then they just refunded it and then they will do their fraud investigation i guess as a company like that like they make their money off of people who don't dispute it the credit card company no like the company you bought the oh yeah from. yeah maybe like but i would have like I would hope most people would dispute it. Like You think so, right? Some people might... It doesn't take that long to call a credit card company. Some like, people might forget. I guess. I know. We we are really very diligent with our credit cards. We go through it every month and yeah. go through our transactions together. And maybe like once you purchase something with your credit card, maybe they would take that card info and then go use it against something else. Oh. Because once you purchase something, then they have all of your card info, right? They could then... Essentially, any company that you have give your credit card info yeah. to buy something they could literally turn around and use your card to buy something else that's with, true. because they have all the info that's fraud yeah that's why companies don't do it all the time or ever unless you're a scam <laughs> yeah but luckily i canceled my and i got a new card within like a week because as soon as you start oh. a fraud investigation 
Yeah. As they cancel your card and they give you a new card number and everything. Yeah. They replace all your info. Yeah. Yeah, is that a super good Alpine Star motocross gear never came in, guys. Darn. Sad. Darn. All right. Back to you. One more for me. My 34 male wife, 35 female, says our marriage is ending because I was not available to support her at her lowest and she resents me deeply. How do I save my marriage? We have a 2.5 year old and a four month old. We have been together for 10 years and married for four. Like any couples, we have our ups and downs, but my wife now says she deeply resents me and her resentment for me only grows. She cannot see me as the same because I was unavailable emotionally when she needed me most and sees our marriage ending when we have a 2.5 year old and a four month old. It's been a very difficult situation. I've been very busy at work, which is essentially a small business and our deadlines are statutory. Our newborn was born a month before the deadline, so I was already stretched thin between work and the baby, which was the worst possible time for me to help with the baby. Furthermore, my wife's mom, my mother-in-law, had a stroke and was in poor health before the stroke, so all hell has broken loose. Given my work situation, a newborn, and a loved one in poor health, my wife and I are in survival mode because my wife is also the caregiver for my mother-in-law. So between taking care of all the house chores, dishes, laundry, taking care of the older kids, helping with the baby, working late every night, and helping my disabled mother-in-law, I had no energy for supporting my wife emotionally as I was exhausted every day. She struggled with postpartum depression, and when she reached out to a family for help, no one would come. She asked for more of my help and attention, but I was not able to support her as I had no energy myself. When my work situation improved, she first told me it made her angry that I was more relaxed and available to help more. Fast forward to today. She can't see me in the same light and I have pledged to gain back her trust and provide the security she needs but does not believe in me. If I had to do things over again, I would have dropped everything at work even if it meant me losing my job, although she understands the importance of meeting my deadlines. Now that I am more available and see her mom is doing better, she can't let go of her anger towards me and not being there when she needed me and sees our marriage ending soon. She says we're two people sharing the same space, but not actually together. How do I fix things between us and save my marriage? I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like these questions this episode we're like not qualified for. <laughs> I feel like we're underqualified for everything. <laughs> Who true. the hell are we? I know, it's true. Yeah, man. I don't know, bro. I don't know. We have, I don't know. We're on seven years. Not, yeah, like, almost. Not 10, not married for four. No, no kids. I don't know. Okay. My biggest question is like, what kind of emotional support was she asking for? Because I, I just don't see that as being something like you couldn't do. I don't know. Yeah, like what 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 is emotional support? Like are you not talking to her? Exactly. Like is it just the basics of like communicating with her, like hugging her, showing you love her, like Isn't that physical? Uh, oh, I guess that is. Yeah, but it's also emotional, I feel. Okay. Like it's it's a reassurance, is, right? What is emotional support? Do I need to ask you how your day was? Yeah, I guess just being more intuitive with your partner, like yeah, talking. Ch- communicating, I think. Like I don't think it's actually something that would take much more effort like i don't know he's saying he's exhausted he had all these other things to do like i don't know maybe when you're doing these things when you're doing the dishes uh, uh, like talk to your wife like yeah i I don't roommates i don't know i'm not i'm not really understanding like what went wrong i think he's not understanding what went wrong yeah i think he's missing i just feel like this was probably a simple fix and now she resents him she was probably, I don't know, begging is, for attention, begging, I don't what know. What if she wasn't? What if he didn't see the signs because she wasn't putting out any signs? Is it all on him? Or was she not making it clear that she needed something from him her, him, and she's just bearing it? Is that his fault because he can't read her mind? Well, it says that she struggled with postpartum depression, and when she reached out to family for help, no one would come. She asked for, She asked for more help. She asked for more of my help and attention, but I was not able to support her as I had no energy myself. So, it seems like she asked. Bro, figure it out, man. Take a fucking Red Bull. Like, (laughs) I have no energy. I came home from work. 
I have fucking figure it the fuck out, dude. You have kids. You have a wife. You don't get to fucking sleep on the couch when you get home from work, dude. Well, I don't think that's what he was doing. He said like he had all these chores to do and stuff. Like he, I think he was helping out. So I'm confused. Is he doing the chores or is he not doing the chores? He's doing the chores. So then, what kind of help does she need? I'm very confused now. Emotional support. No, she says she's asking family to come over for help. For emotional support, she had postpartum depression. That's what she's saying. Okay. Not not actual support, not, not actual help. No, what? I think she just wanted like a companion to talk to. Like, has he refused to talk to her? I'm so confused how it got to this point. I'm trying to understand how does it get to this point. He she says she asked for more attention from him and he couldn't support her. Do they not sleep in the same bed every night? I don't know. Cuddle me when I sleep. Let's cry to sleep together. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like this is something that could have been prevented. Like, I, I feel like something went wrong on a fundamental level. You're missing the micro baby steps of a relationship. The little things. The little things, yeah. The tiny things. The little things that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Especially going through postpartum depression. Like, that is when you need your partner the most. Yeah. Like, I, I, like is he sleeping through when the baby wakes up in the middle of the night? Are they sleeping in separate beds so that he could sleep and go to work the next day? So I have so many questions. Yeah. Let's see if he responds to any. He does respond to a lot of comments. Never cross our mind to hire a nanny as our oldest is in daycare. Newborn just sleeps all day and is very easy baby. And a cleaner means having a stranger in the house when there is a newborn, which didn't sit well with my wife. Paternity leave or any other type of extended leave isn't feasible at my small 10-person company since I'm an individual contributor slash VP level. I can take vacation and be free of work in specific windows. Otherwise, I'm working on vacation. I like my job because I work from home most days, which is not the norm in my industry. It allows me to help around the house and the baby when I'm working, so quitting when dealing with chronic issues seems short-sighted. But it's what led me to neglecting my wife. Quitting also means going into our savings to pay for daycare, 2K a month, our mortgage, 4K a month, caregivers, 4K a month, for an unknown amount of time. Given the job market, it is unknown when I would find a comparable job. So yeah, maybe that's what I should have done. Quit without having a job lined up while still having financial responsibilities and pay bills to, and then become overwhelmed with our financial situation. I don't think I could do that, but what do I know? I don't know. Sounds like maybe it's not just him. Maybe. Like, because she's got mother-in-law issues or mother, her mom issues and stuff. He says in another comment, I do acknowledge I did not prioritize my wife. I focus on things that I knew I could take care of. Handling the house chores, taking care of the toddler, changing 10 diapers a day, getting my work done. Thinking that was enough, but it wasn't. It was also easier to do so, but still draining. What I didn't focus on were the issues my wife struggled with. The care of her mother. My mother-in-law already has an advanced neurodegenerative disease before her stroke, and I didn't want to spend energy on navigating elder care, which is complicated to say the least. Not resolving this has led me to issues in our marriage. What I do regret is not taking time off work and dealing with the work aftermath later. Now the shitty situation I'm in is getting worse. On one hand, yes. I think it sounds like a tornado. Yeah, it does. It's like it's really messy. But on another hand, like you do need money like you have to work it's tough this is tough it's like it sounds like he's doing a lot i'm i'm I, it sounds like he's doing a lot and i'm i'm not really understanding what he's not doing i'm missing the part of what he's not doing he didn't focus on his wife caring for his her mom his mother-in-law and his his comments are getting downvoted so People are not agreeing with him. I'm so confused here. Sounds like he's changing 10 diapers a day. Sounds like he's taking care of the baby all day. Yeah, I think she just... I don't know. (laughs) I'm wondering if this is not a fully him issue. Maybe. I think it might be also a wife who is, is kind of part of the problem. Like, she might not be communicating with him fully. She's holding herself back. She says she resents him, so that's building on that resentment. And it's like, where did this resentment come from in the first place? Because it sounds like he's working from home. He's working as much as he can. He's doing as many of the chores and the tasks that he can. He's doing the diaper changes, and he's taking care of all of the stuff for the newborn baby. Usually, resentment comes from, like, 
the wife being the only caretaker for the child. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's honestly just emotional support. But I don't know. It, the question doesn't seem to be, where did I go wrong? I think he knows where he went wrong. Maybe he's not really specifying it in the post. Yeah. So how do I save my marriage? Yeah. Just keep trying. <laughs> Yeah, I guess try to make up for it as much as you can. Like, show her you care about her by, I don't know, making her favorite dinner, buying her flowers, like, showing her that you truly love and appreciate her. Yeah. Um, And not just for the short term. Like, make it, like, a long-term adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That was a whirlwind. Yeah. I feel extremely confused. Sorry. I don't know how I feel about that one. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay, that's all we got. I I have two that I didn't get to. I have one I didn't get to. And if you guys know, they're going to be on Patreon. Yes, they I'm will. Gonna put those on the Patreon next episode. I'll give you a hint at one of the titles. My husband refused to answer my calls while I was in labor. My brother played a horrible prank. <gasps> now my husband is fierce. I won't cut him off. I'm excited for that one. That's going to be on Patreon. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> you got any uh we got any life updates we got any updates i started re- i started listening to this stupid book <laughs> <laughs> oh i well okay if you guys have been listening for a while you know that i read akatar like uh i don't know a few last year i guess yeah and you and i i convinced you to read it we made a deal we made a deal we made a deal and i held I, up my end of the bargain i will read the first akatar book and you will read 10 or 15 chapters of Aragon. It was 10. Because Aragon is my favorite book. Yes. And guess what? I read more. She did. I will admit that. So. Mamie's, and you ended up reading the entirety of the Akatar series. Well, I've, I've, four out of five books. Yeah. Three and a half. <laughs> I guess. I got halfway through that last <laughs> one in need. Italy. <laughs> it was not that good. It was. There's no real story. It's just recaps. It was just a, a filler. The first three books were amazing. First three books were really good. I was on board with that. I was really on board. It was good. But I wasn't. I the first book was hard. It was hard to listen to. The first half of the book was hard because she was so much details to her opinion. It was too much. Aragon was a little bit more balanced of a little bit of narration and more um, world building at a faster pace. Akatar was like <laughs> Akatar. She had to describe everything in more detail than necessary, okay. and it moved very slow. Yeah, where Aragon moved at a much faster pace, and this new book, The Fourth Wing. Has been at a much better pace. Yes. So since Akatar, I um, I've been looking for a book similar to it. So my friend recommended Fourth Wing because it's similar to Akatar. And when I started reading it, I was like, Oh, babe, you are going to love this book. I just know it. You know what I just realized? I got fleeced here. I didn't even get anything of starting to listen to this book. No, well, I you didn't got get a, a foot massage this time. You got. You're not going to read any more Aragon. What did I get out of this? I didn't have to convince you. Okay, I didn't have to beg you. I knew you wanted to. You literally did beg. I literally gave in to you begging. You're like, can I? Can I please? Can I just download the audiobook, please? <laughs> we can listen to it on the drive today. Can I please? This was after a week of you begging me. Ever since you picked up the book, you've been like two chapters in for your own benefit. You're like, oh, babe, you would love it. Se- seven chapters in, babe, this is amazing. 14 chapters in babe you would actually love there's dragons you would love it there's magic and now what you are listening to it on the freaking toilet like you are so i'm in yeah exactly you, you're welcome you downloaded the audiobook you're, you're driving welcome. it was at a much better pace than akatar so i didn't even feel like a struggle through the first you should be thanking me thank you <laughs> yeah fuck and then, I don't understand. and then after we started it, I was like, oh, I wonder like what people think this character looks like. So I looked it up and I looked up at images on Google because it said like she had like silver hair, lose the pigmentation or whatever, uh, gray hair. So I was like, I just want to see what people are drawn for the character. Like, what's the artwork look like? And then I found this one and it was like a poster and it was like the book in the middle. And then it was kind of showing like other books that it could be related to. Like, if you like this book, you'll like it. And guess what was on that little image that I saw? motherfucking aragon aragon akatar it's like if you like the dragons of aragon it's got that it's like if you like the romance of akatar it's got that i'm like yeah i'm not there for that but if you like the bloodthirstiness of game of thrones it's got that too and then it was something else the fourth one i I wasn't familiar with so i was like okay aragon game of thrones and i like akatar so i think i will like this book yeah and it's been good it's been good so far you 
every time I get in the car, he's like, oh my God, I couldn't wait to get in the car and listen to the book. I predicted some things to be accurate. Something. And now Teresa's like at the end of the book and she's like crying last night. And I'm like, who died? Who died? I know someone died. <laughs> Bet you the sister died. We're going to find out. That's my, that is my theory right now. I would like to say that I had a theory that she was going to get the black dragon and then she did. And I'm giving you spoilers. I'm sorry, but if you've already read the book, then then you're excited for me. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a good book. Yeah, and that, I just realized there's three books in yeah, the series. Pretty good. I, I would thought ju- there was only two. I would just like to say that Aragon, still better. I disagree. I think the difference is, is you like romance books. Yeah. I just like the fantasy books. That's what I get into. It's only a good book to you because there's like, it's a girl is the main character and it's like steamy romance. She's like, oh my God, he, look at those eyes, look at those hair, look at those looks. <laughs> and Aragon had a little bit of romance, but it was more, it was in a, it's written in a different way. I guess it was written by a guy, yours was written by a girl. Yeah. I feel like girls, they like to go a bit more on the romance side and the guys are like, violence. And I also like how Aragon, the magic works better in Aragon, I think. And there is a sword, main sword in Aragon. And this chick's got daggers, which is pretty cool. I'm just waiting for her to kill somebody. I'm like, she needs to kill, she needs more bloodthirstiness. She needs to throw a dagger at someone's throat. Mm. Jack Barlow. She's going to kill him first. <laughs> Heard it here first, guys. So predictions. Yeah, that's been good. <laughs> that's our life update. <laughs> that is our life this update. This book has consumed us for the last couple of days. It has. <laughs> yeah. What else has been new? You, you tried... Um, I have been trying the Schedule 35 products. They sent me a excellent little gift basket, yes. and I have been microdosing. And I feel like I've gotten really good ideas. Yeah. I've come up with some really creative ideas. No, like, side effects. Like, I'm not high or anything like that. But, like, I take them more in the afternoon. I've been taking the 100 milligrams microdosing a day, and I've been getting, like, lots of good ideas. Like, I came up with the idea of, like, why don't we do – on r slash thread pod cod why don't i do an r slash thread talk podcast episode yeah and it's only episodes from our uh podcast and i feel like i've come up with some other ideas that i'm not ready to share yet and they're into work over here <laughs> but it's been really fun it's been really fun yeah i feel like i don't know i've noticed a little bit of the improvements of your microdosing um just like you seem more more creative yeah. i think like and like when i settle down to like edit into my I- italy vlog I, I i don't know it just i feel more a little bit more focused on it and like it's really good with like editing because like with editing i'm trying to get more creative with stuff so i've been like using more things but i've really been enjoying all of the schedule 35 products they've got tea chocolate pills and the chocolate bars are fantastic so yeah. i'm excited to try some you gave more. some to your dad i did he loved it everybody's been enjoying it yeah yes yeah, so, don't forget, use that uh, Thread Talk podcast, uh, Thread Talk discount on Schedule35.co. Yeah. And uh, Teresa starts her new job tomorrow, so I can finally get back to work. I can... I had a week off. It's, it was it was beautiful. It was nice. Yeah. This... Uh, when we came back from Italy, I had to get podcast stuff done. And then now Teresa's had this week off work. So, so next week, I'll finally be able to get to edit the Italy vlog. I got to pump out the Italy Vita, Villa review video, and then I got to pump out like one of the hotel videos, and then I can get to the vlog video. So I'm expecting to get that done this week, but I only have a three and a half day work week now, or four and a half, three and a half. Monday's gone. I'll get Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Teresa has a half day on Friday. So I only have three and a half days, and when Teresa's not working, I don't get to do any work. <laughs> so now we do stuff. Yeah, we go and we go and do stuff. Next week, I'll be able to get a full weekend. I want to. I wanted to get to go play around with my E36 this week, but I've got to get the Italy video done before I go do that. So that will probably be a next week thing for me. We know you guys are itching for the Italy video. I know you guys are itching for E36 car content. BMW, I don't think so. BMW car content. I don't think so. No, probably not. <laughs> just, a, just a couple of them. But I know a lot of them, a lot of them want Italy. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. You got anything else? That's all. That's it. Thanks for our sponsors. Thanks for you guys smashing the like button on YouTube, hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all. And thanks for joining us on Patreon for those extra episodes. Um, We appreciate every single one of you listening. Um, And just thanks again for your support. Yeah. If you haven't already, drop that five-star review down on Spotify. And there's new comments on Spotify so we can chat. Sounds good. See you next time. Bye. Bye.